You're using them big words I don't understand. You, that's not going to get me very far. Welcome back to the Comics of Fishing Idols, right here on Thinking Critical YouTube, the best damn comic book podcast you're ever going to find on the interwebs, especially here on YouTube. Got a fantastic panel today. A little bit of a light week as far as comic book news and whatnot, but we had some standout issues we need to talk about. We got big changes in Spider-Man. DC Comics keeps going full speed into the iceberg. We got a few things to talk about there. Fantastic panel. First up, we've got Kenneth Dowling. How you doing, Kenneth? Wonderful rest. I'm doing great. Glad to be here talking comics. Let's go. Where did you get that? What's that shirt? Which cover is that for Spider-Man? Uh, Todd McFarlane. This is, I think this is 300. Yeah, this is 300. That's right? 300. 301 yeah. has him in the, sil the red and blue again. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Except for it doesn't have the background. Right. It's beautiful. I got me an X-Men shirt coming. Hopefully it'll be here at any day. I'm wearing Plus we got uh, hey, a I'm lot wearing of nice people. I'm what? wearing the Art Adams Classic X-Men number one t-shirt right now. Very nice. Doc, how are you doing? You, you were in Houston? How was did you get some Tex Mex? Oh yeah, I got plenty of Tex Mex. And I got some Whataburger. So Ooh. I'm a happy fat man. The only uh, good thing at Whataburger are their, their chicken strips, man. You oh, shut your mouth. Shut well. your whore mouth. <laughs> shut your whore mouth. And Arby's has better sandwiches. If you need a burger, I say go to the plug for Arby's. I'm, I, you, you know what? That's it. I'm, I'm, ra I'm rage quitting on that one. No, nope. you're out nope. of here. Okay. Yeah. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> He's out. Whataburger sucks. I don't. It's, it's okay. It's, it's not bad. Yeah. It's not bad. You know, it's not Five Guys or anything. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, so it's okay, like Josh. I'm sorry. What? We got the the DC efficient out of the Batman story, Josh. You're upset about you don't like Five Guys now. Five Guys is fine, but Whataburger's bigger, better. You have more. You have more options. You can do way more. More so, options. That's literally what Five Guys is. You can make like a thousand different kind of cheeseburgers. Yeah, Five but Guys always on that you get bacon, mushrooms, onions. Yeah, but that's all it is. Like you get cheeseburgers with different toppings. Like Whataburger, you get different sauces, different top. Like you can go all out. You want like a like? Are you a saying Five Guys doesn't have different sauces? You can get mayonnaise, ketchup, mustard. It's not like wow. burger, dude. You got West, sweet West and spicy. Just you got the their southern sauce. You've got different barbecue, like it, it, Whataburger. Whataburger all the way. Whataburger all the way. Look, if you're gonna call mayonnaise a sauce, I'm gonna rage quit this. What are you gonna call it? <laughs> salad dressing? Are you you call condiment. mayonnaise a salad dressing, Gabe? It's you true. You are. It is, a, it is a condiment, but it is not a sauce. Let's let's, let's just keep, use our words correctly here. Welcome it's back to Fast green. Food Aficionados. <laughs> you guys are all morons. How do I get stuck with you guys? Yeah, look, it, we got you asked. Oh, you asked I was me. just gonna say if there's any sign of how today's gonna go, it's how this stream started and the five minutes before the stream started. I showed up, I was the last one to show up in the green room, and I didn't even get to say hello because Gabe was like ranting, and I was like, <laughs> It's oh, gonna be one of those days. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> Captain America's here. Yeah, because uh, uh, Gabe, I wanted, I want to introduce myself to you, Gabe. But yeah, you were ranting, so I think he was. <laughs> well, the wrong way for me to come into a stream is for anybody to ask me a question about a specific comic that they know I'm gonna hate. That's the wrong <laughs> way to start a stream. It's like that. Uh, what was it Rolling Stone? Start me up. Never stop. <laughs> You just get Roll the crank, rattles, man. Crank, yes, crank and crank and crank, and here we go. And we do have Gabe Hernandez from uh, Weird Science DC, as well as Comical Opinions. He's a comic book reviewer, a, a, an aficionado of fine comic books. How you doing, Gabe? I'm doing just fine. Thank you for having me. I appreciate the the fine folks that we have on the panel today, and everybody in chat. And uh, I'm sorry, you, you got me worked up right before I even got on. So I apologize for not doing my introductions properly. <laughs> so yeah. Doc has an Art Adams. Yeah. X Men shirt. We've got Kenneth with uh, Spider Man 300. I've got Darth Vader free throat hugs, and you're wearing Best Panda Dad. Best. This is uh this was a gift from my daughter because uh, she had a panda themed birthday party, and she said, "Daddy, oh. you got to wear this as a recognition of my party, which is her party." And I said, "Sure." And it turned out to be a very comfortable shirt, so I'm just gonna wear it. Yeah, it looks nice. Got like a good softball feel to it. Oh yeah, there. It's very comfy. Feels good on my skin. Who else we got? Who we not introduced? We've not introduced Drew from from Comics Lead. How you doing, Drew? I'm doing great. And as far as this, this fast food debate goes, look, I was stationed down at Eglin Air Force Base in Florida, and every night after going clubbing, the two places that were busy were Whataburger and Waffle House. Because so, it's junk yeah. food. Waffle, House. Waffle House. Waffle <laughs> House. 
Whataburger is the Waffle House of burger joints. It's, you <laughs> only go there when you're hammered. Thank you. <laughs> if you were down in England, did you ever go to that? Um, is it Stucky's Fish Taco Joint? Mm-mm, no. Oh, that place was delicious. Man, I like that. But nobody's ever. Yeah, that's not good to do that. I will I say really... this. I'm sorry. Sorry, Roy. Sorry. Yeah. A friend of mine told me if you're living in Florida and you want to impress a girl, take her to the Waffle House. That's how you yeah. impress women in Florida. Not Red Lobster? Well, that too. Oh, oh yeah. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> when do we oh, stop taking Lord. chicks to Red Lobster in America? That's where it's at. That's what Beyonce says. You know, she said, "You do me, I take you to Red Lobster." So. <laughs> Better biscuits, we man. Do have, yeah. We biscuits. do have a few uh, super chats to start off. We'll get in these and we'll get in the topics. First, we got Kyle Wild. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Three books by Heather Antos. I hate everyone I meet. My career as a glorified failure. And Todd McFarlane, please give me your money. Hey, that's like an autobiographical <laughs> thing. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for chiming. And we got Comic Exposed. Chris says Whataburger is better than Five Guys, and Be- Five Guys is better than In and Out. Correct. Right. Yes. The yeah. only good thing on the menu at at In and Out is a double double. That's every all, menu all the, That's pretty much all the menu is. I I would pick In and Out over Five Guys just because In and Out's like a third the cost, but. In and Out has the shittiest fries of any yeah. place I have ever gone. Yes. Dude, McDonald's still has the best great. fries. Get the fries animal style, and, and it's bomb. Animal style? That's off menu. What is that? Is that, that chili? It's like, they, that? No, they put cheese and their sauce and, and something else on there, and it gets all melted into the fries. Do they put mayonnaise sauce on it? No, it's there. It's like the Thousand Island sauce that they use for their burgers. Oh, but. very nice. Well, maybe you got to get the fries animal style. There we go. That's we got Lade Kramer. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Wes, Doc, just admit you are not good DC gender studies students, as is 90% of human population, especially <laughs> for $5 and more per issues of it. I am not a good student of that. No. It's actually closer to 99%, but close enough. I don't like when I read the solicitations that I don't understand what's happening. It should be pretty basic stuff, but DC is getting pretty complicated when they're trying to explain what the hell I'm supposed to know about the comic books. Hey, got- the, they've just spent, they're just doing, again, they're just copying Marvel's homework from six years ago. Absolutely. We've got Common Sense. Johnny Rocket, Shake Shack, anyone? Johnny Rockets is good. They have still open? Yes. They're, they're yeah. Good, yes. They're, 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 though. they're right? I wouldn't. I don't know if I'd call Johnny Rocket fast food, though. I think they're a little bit more. It's like a cafe diner type thing. Right? Yeah, it's yeah. more like diner. It's diner fast food. Yeah, it's. it's- it's um uh, oh god there was a you know what like it's kind of the it, it's kind of like a uh, steak and shake it's fast food of the 50s yeah it, it's steak and shake i like sonic still man they got really good onion rings you know what i'm saying but don't oh, even we get don't me talking about steak and here. shake i had a bad incident there they i got a mushroom and, and cheeseburger there and when it came out it looked like there was like you know what i mean on it some dude Ooh. sauce and I, they, oh. said it back. <laughs> and they're like, "What's wrong with the burger?" I was like, "That kind of looks like jizz." And I had to say it to this manager; she was a really old lady. And I felt really uncomfortable, and then she tried to give me my money back. I was like, "I think this is what the burger was supposed to look like, so you can just keep it. I'm not eating it." And then, uh, <laughs> I don't think burger, she got you have to ask not for the special sauce. You got to remember that. You think, yeah, yeah, you didn't. Apparently, you didn't, you didn't remember like, that. this is not. It's not it was it was today. it was the very special sauce. Yeah. Wes was like, Doc, "Did I wink when I asked for the special sauce?" <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, how does it, how does it go? You got to tap the guy on the foot as you're passing. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh man! My goodness, we got Caleb Lyle once again. Thank you so much. This is a part a two part question. After Thor, lesbians in space. Don't argue. I think I'm just going to stop watching the MCU entirely. <laughs> because I d- didn't feel anything for Thor, it'll end the same way that damn cartoon Legend of Korra ended with sexuality changes at the last bit. Yeah, that sounds about right. I I, I have absolutely no interest in this stupid movie. Well, a lot of people do have interest, Doc. I think it broke the record for views on YouTube, didn't it? I, I Hey, I'm not surprised it did, but honestly, they would have done better to do an Asgardians of the Galaxy movie. 
don't know. I thought that trailer four. was good. Didn't you? Didn't you, Josh? Um, it, it was fine. I look yeah. overall. I think it was overall. Guns and Roses, I, man. Yeah, look, there are elements that were that were okay, but overall, look, we'll talk about it later. Overall, I thought yeah. it was a weak teaser, and, and I think as much as you I didn't like the Chris Hemsworth trying to move in as Chris Pratt's talking about all the people he loves. There are two moments that I laughed at. And that was one of them. I, just because it's my sense of humor and it's the stupid shit that I tend to do to people. But uh, yeah, as, as far as a movie teaser goes, then I thought it was a weak song. I thought it was fun. It showed, uh, it showed Thor instead of all the other characters nobody wants to know about. King Valkyrie is pretty funny. That was pretty funny seeing her in charge. I'm like, oh, this yeah. is, you think this, we're gonna, we think we're going to buy this. <laughs> yeah, I still ain't calling her a fucking king. Well, okay, Doc. Well, we're going to get to that part. We got Darth Bobcat. Didn't Cotter have romantic tension with Girl Speedy in the early 2000s? That was my Green Arrow run I read, but it's been a while. There is a comic cover where he's actually making out with someone on the cover. and making out with a chick on it. Uh, I need to find it, but... uh, I don't think he's... Her. We're going to get to this, obviously. I don't think he's asexual. I think he just has a vow of celibacy. Yes. To be a part of his monastery. He's, yes. he's a monk. There's a difference, but yeah, I, I'm with you, Darth Bobcat. I was all kinds of confused by what we're seeing. Hey, we got we got Aaron Sparrow with uh, Merc Magazine. You guys at Merc are kicking and kicking ass there, uh, Drew. Yes, we are. Yeah, pre. So yeah, go to your LCSs. The uh, Merc Publishing books are available for pre order at the stores. Yeah, Born of Blood will be there later this summer. Don't worry. <laughs> Definitely, you gotta get the, uh, the little code there and order them. Straight from um, from Luter. We got Callum Lyle. Call me out if my remarks are over the top, especially you, Josh. It's not at you. Are you calling people out, Josh? Are you making the viewers uncomfortable for having over the top comments? I mean, I got Doc on the panel. <laughs> <laughs> I, I usually don't look unless I think something's extremely uh, out there. I, I'm probably going to be agreeing with you, so you're you're fine. Listen, we'll just laugh at it. This, we're not. We're not here to be too serious. Unless my my shoulder is killing me, so I'm probably going to be grumpy today. Wes has heard enough of my conversations behind the scenes. Like I, I may be gay, but I'm pretty. I'm pretty conservative when it comes down to it. So, my goodness, you're letting it all out of the bag now. I'm letting it all out of the bag. We've got Al. She says hi. How you doing, Al? Hopefully everything's doing well. I know her. Her mom, I believe, is in recovery right now. Mm. We've been uh, praying for Al and the family, and that everything is going well. So hi, Al. Good to see you here. And I think, I think that's about it. We can get into the the first uh, the first topic. We got DC gender studies failing. We've got the cancellation, obviously. Of the the Aquaman comic book that was uh, early, we had the Green Lantern book that was featuring it was it uh, JoJo Mullins that got canceled early. We've got the reveal that Connor Hawk is in fact asexual. I guess he's not a monk, or his vow of uh, celibacy means nothing because he has no urges or attraction to any genders. I don't know, Josh. Uh, if there's anybody on the panel that this is for, I guess it's for you because you're the gay guy. <laughs> I just don't feel like it's going very well. Uh, no, I, I'm actually wishing that for this panel, I would have been aware enough before we started to change my name to the gay guy instead of, uh, Josh <laughs> um, no, it's not going well. Uh, and look, you know, I, I think, uh, there's, it's such a loaded issue. Like I, I think top of the mark is, you know, we took away the characters we love the most for these supporting characters. And they're supporting characters that are even lower on the, the totem pole than other supporting characters we would have preferred to see. And then to try to make the point of making them, uh, putting them in the spotlight or making them relevant, they're like, we're going to change A, B, and C about them. And we're going to make them gay or a lesbian or asexual. And it's just like, dude, nobody fucking cares. Like, yeah, okay. I'm sure there's someone out there that's like, yes, that's like 0.5%, right? I think what people really want, they might be more excited that they're seeing the character and they're hoping they're going to get a real story other than, you know, what we got. Like, these books were terrible. And you know. it's because they went all in on on focusing on this aspect of them as opposed to like, look, we're going to pull this character back out. We're going to come up with a good story. We're going to get a writer who's actually halfway decent. Notice I didn't even say good, just halfway decent. Just give us fucking that. And... Uh, and said we get a you know a steaming pile of shit that was set on fire on our doorstep. Well, I think your math is actually correct on that. I one do good at one, the maths. One person 
uh, with current DC sales, that does actually work out to 0.5%. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, because yeah, they're selling about um, 200 copies. That's it's they're they're fucking look, this company is toast at this point. It's legitimately t- it set itself on fire with the number two publisher that mm-hmm. was instant number two to be yep. perfectly honest. And with only that has struggled to remain relevant in basically since the 80s. Um, and it's done a, a yeoman's job at times. Um, and even, you know, kind of gotten relatively close, but it, it making the exact same mistakes. Like I understand make stupid ass mistakes like currently they're like we've spent the last 10 years with actually like the last 15 years with dc doing its damnedest or well with marvel doing its damnedest to try to be dc with adding in all the legacy nonsense and, and all that shit that works for dc comics um and dc trying to be marvel by adding all like the world outside your window and all it does is end up making, you know, godly characters kind of, you know, boring and bring them down to, they're they're interesting as godly. They're not interesting as the guy down the street. You mean like, godlike, or you mean godly? If uh, when you say godly, I'm assuming that they are like praising God. No, I, godly. well, okay, fine. More like godlike then. Okay. Um. So. Yeah, they, they've they've spent a number of years trying to do that, and all they've done is turn, you know, hugely aspirational characters into, you know, Spider Man, which which doesn't work for Superman. I mean, it really doesn't. Um, you can't bring him down to that level. You know, Clark's got to be the mask that Superman wears. Um, and the same way Bruce is the, the mask that, that Batman wears. And Diana is the mask that, you know, Wonder Woman wears. Um, and, but now they're, they're going even further in the shit that Marvel's doing and trying to copy it and trying to be like it. And it didn't work for Marvel. Why in the hell would they think it would work for them? And, and all it's doing is setting their company literally on fire, and with with no hopes of uh, no hopes of recovery. What what is their recovery plan at this point? I mean, look, I know some of you guys are big DC fans. What what is what could possibly be their recovery po- plan at this point? Josh, you're the DC aficionado. He's speaking to you, buddy. What's going on? Uh, I mean, I think first off is, you know, bring her core characters back. But <laughs> that would be step one of recovery plan. But, uh, but look, dude, but I this... don't know. It's, I was going to say, well, it's such a shit storm because, and it goes back to what we talked about for week after week after week. There's no sense of actual direction and there's no sense of a focus on telling actual stories, generally speaking, holistically speaking. Uh, you get exceptions here and there, but they tend to be an exception to this like shitty rule as opposed to like, this is the standard. Um, and, and I think that's where you have to start. Like, let's use our, let's utilize our top tier characters. Let's tell stories and let's focus on like a heroic journey as opposed to like, Hey, we made this character gay. Like, cool. Like, okay, we're going to spend the next year and a half just focusing on that. But my, I guess my question here though, is if they want to bring like their, get back to their core and all that fun stuff, how do they do it after they've spent the last year? Almost Crisis. two years, basically denigrating their core heroes in order to build up the same way that Marvel's failed at bringing their core heroes back because they spent so many years denigrating them in order to raise the level of these, you know, honestly, dollar store. They're the fucking dollar general knockoffs. Um, how, how do they how do they bring them back after doing that much damage to the originals? Can they bring them back, Gabe? Or are Can. they just stuck in this? Uh, this are they in purgatory, comic book purgatory now with their characters? Okay, Uh-oh. the you can bring you can bring this back. 
you can bring this back, but we're, we're looking at the wrong thing. Um, you, you don't build up the characters and, and start them on an even playing field. Where you have to start is you have to wipe out DC's executive branch of leadership. Yeah. Everybody. Probably from Jim Lee on down through the next yeah. three layers of management and I would say a majority of the editorial staff. That's where you have to start. The reason I say that is because where the point where we are with DC Comics in the the strategy of the storytelling, the way they structure events. Let's take Trial of the Amazons. Look at that as, a, as an event, right? It's a disaster. Um, yes. You cannot come to that place and then get it to the point where multiple layers of management, uh, editorial and publishing, approved that event and then actually spent money to have it printed and shipped and everything that goes along with it which is a vast amount of waste when you look at the quality of what you're getting in return. That That is a level of brokenness that you're not going to say, oh, well, just write better stories and it'll be okay. No, <laughs> because the, 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 the brokenness starts with the decision-making uh, mechanisms, which is way back down at the chain, right from inception. So Jim Lee, Marie Javins, uh, if she's still working there, which might be a question, I'm not sure. I think they might have been keeping that quiet. Well, I'm not sure what's going on with that. And, and everybody in between there, their whole decision-making mechanism for how they vet stories and which character you, to use and how they create events, that whole system is broken right from right, from, right at the root of it. So if you want to get DC back into a better place, you you can't treat the symptom. you got to treat the root cause. And the root cause is the decision-making yeah. process right from the beginning is just completely kaput. Now you say, well, we, you don't fire everybody. That's wrong. Well, no, it's not. Because if you look at the decisions that are being made, what you see is a fundamental a lack of good judgment-making skills, lack of good decision-making skills, lack of, in, in a lot of cases, just fundamental understanding about the properties that they have. They're just looking, oh, Captain America, he's the guy with the shield. Or, you know, Batman, he's the guy that with the cape, right? And the horns on his head. You know, that's, that's how I imagine some of these editors think about these things. You, 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 can't, you can't fix stupid. And, and <laughs> everything about that system is stupid. You have to, you have to like, it's like a broken bone that didn't set right. You have to re-break it, set it properly, and then let everything grow around that. And if you're going to say, well, just, you know, let's start with a good Superman story here and a good, no, because all the bad people who are making, and I mean bad in the, as in decision-making skills, all the people who are making those bad decisions are still there. Yep. And they can, now, they can no longer be trusted with the properties they have when you look at the quality of the content and the product that DC is putting out. And yes, I call it product because that's what it is. Yep. And, and treating it like that. And I think, I think the problem that you're going to have with it is as long as those people are still there, they're the ones, they are going to try to find ways to justify those poor decisions from before by continuously reintroducing the same failed ideas because they will never accept that they had a terrible fucking idea. It was just bad execution. Look, this is this is toothpaste already out of the tube. There's no way to put it back. Yeah, but but let me back up I, on that. Again, that's not to say that DC can't be fixed. I believe anything can be fixed if you're willing to put in the dedication and the work and spend the money and the time and everything else. It's just my my point on on you know that little speech right before was that to fix it. You have to you have to root out the cancer right from the source. Yes, you can't you can't just put a bandaid on it and then it's just going to be better. You have to dig deep, and that's going to be painful. It's going to be bloody. It's going to hurt. But if but it can be done if if you have leadership that is committed to being successful, and you don't have that right now. And I think that's going to end up happening with uh, uh forgive me, I'm forgetting the gentleman's name who owns Discovery. Oh, who just oh, Zaslov. Zaslov. I have a strong feeling that's going to happen because he said him and his team, they want to, for starting with number one, make Superman a strong priority, make him viable again. And that starts with DC Comics, with taking out, like you're saying, remove, if it has to be, remove that entire leadership and get someone who wants to make other kinds of stories, not just having Batman 24-7 or having this stuff with, with the characters, just doing things that are continually not working and have not been working for the last, 
I don't know, five, six, seven years. So that may end up being happening right now. So it's still a 50 50. Uh, so when I mentioned there's no direction, I was kind of late, like what Gabe expanded on is, is what I was leaning into. You, you've got to get it fixed from the top to fix the bottom in the product. I, apparently I'm angelic today. I don't know what's going on with my white balance. Apologies. Um, but I, you know, even with the leadership coming in and saying that they want to put a priority on Superman, yes, it sounds good, but we don't know what their mindset of what that is. That could be changing leadership, which I think is needed, but that change in leadership could also mean getting the wrong leadership in again. Uh, it can also mean like, Hey, we don't have enough books featuring Superman, get more books featuring Superman and then not have a change of leadership. We're going to have to wait and see. And, and, and I agree with Gabe. I think you can fix anything. Uh, but I do think the damage is done. So even if they take the actions to fix it, I think it's going to take a couple of years, at least like a good four, five, six years before you fully get people to rely on and trust it. And I don't know if companies, especially following a merger, are going to be that patient. I think they might make a change and it might be a good change and a change that we want to see. And it might be there for like a year. But if they don't see quick changes or quick increases, they're going to be like, well, this isn't working and move on. Um, companies they're not patient. So hey, it's going to be interesting. Very true. What do you think, Drew, from a retailer perspective? Do you think uh, all these changes and DC comics kind of going down this one path, even though it's not working, continuously going in there and double and tripling down on, on the ideas is working? I, I think, honestly, for comics late in our end, it really – I don't want to say it won't matter because I mean, a lot of people are buying them for the covers. I mean, I got to be honest about it. They're buying them for the covers. If there's a beautiful Lucio Prio cover for a Wonder Woman trial, trial of the Amazons part seven, it's going to sell like hotcakes, not because of the story, but because of Lucio, unfortunately. And, you know, really, if, if you really want to punish these companies, I mean, you really take, get rid of these hot artists on these books and put some, you know, lesser quality artists on these books and we'll see how well they do, you know, then they can't log those. But um, this is what it is. Like, I don't like it. I mean, I, you really need to hold these editors and assistant editors accountable for what they're doing and rather what they're not doing and um, bring in some people that can do it better, like Joe Corallo and Aaron Sparrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not everybody's as lucky as you guys over at Burke, uh, Burke Magazine. We do have a few super chats. We'll hit those up right now. Calabile asks, what is the purpose of gender studies? I actually did a video about this. So there was a supply and demand issue when it came to higher education. There are people that, that demanded higher education, but that, that weren't like qualified to go and be doctors and lawyers and do higher level studies, but they still had money to do it. So they created a bunch of degrees that mean nothing. So people would go and spend them and they can say, I have a degree, even though you like weren't really ready to go to college or you probably wasn't in your, uh, I don't know, wasn't the best path for your future. So it was just something that was created so they could, uh, you know, charge people money for stupid stuff. It's a Ponzi scheme for the most part. Eric O'Sullivan says, at $3.99 being the medium price, I'm so glad not to be spending my money or living space this past decade. Question is, is the Raven swap set on Earth-11? That would make it fair game. It is set in Earth-11. And it, if, if this was just a normal thing that came out and that was part of the story, it wouldn't mean anything. But when you look at the totality of all the swaps that they're doing and these are all the headlines that they're generating, it kind of becomes a bit. Yes, there is Earth-11. There is a, an Earth out there of characters that are gender swapped the entire earth me personally josh i mean obviously you're a dc fan as well i would rather just see grant morrison touch that stuff it's like no i don't want to see danny lord's interpretation of earth blood uh yeah <laughs> like again this goes back to even what i said earlier you know if you want to do something get talent it's actually going to be you know good uh Again, I, I I don't care about this. Like it is what it is. You know, we we talked about this when we recorded the other day. It's it's I I realized right away this was Earth Eleven. I didn't have any issues with it. Uh, my take was kind of like I I think the issue here is they're making such a big deal out of like oh female Raven or male Raven. Uh, yeah, like no shit. Like okay, cool, move on. If you hadn't done that, nobody would be talking. They they'd just be like oh Earth Eleven or is this Earth Eleven and that's it. And it's a stupid waste of resources, to be completely honest, yeah. Josh. We've seen where all this, this growth is happening in comic books. It's not male Raven. 
It's no. actually Raven for young adults. That's where you can yeah. actually make some money. Why spend money and waste resources making this when you could go out and, and do something to grow the brand? Raven yeah. is one of the few characters that, that kids in America that are like six to ten years old probably know about from DC. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, they saw that their their uh, young adult line, especially the Raven, Raven and Beast Boy book sold really, really well. Um, it, it blows my mind that they never leaned into that further because, um, you know, this is just where common sense and business comes in. If you have a young adult series that's targeted to a specific audience that's separated from your main continuity, if it takes off, you would then want to go, hmm, this character is connecting. Let's utilize this character more. Oh, by the way, what is taking off? Let's start uh, in the new prints that we put out. Let's start putting little adverts for these other like in, in continuity titles that she's in. I mean, it's not that hard. But I, I am in agreement with you, Eric. If, if just in a vacuum by itself, it's no big deal. It's whatever. But once you throw it on top of everything else that's going on in the fact that that's what they're advertising the book on, you got to kind of uh, discuss it. We got uh, Cal Mile. Doc, I'm willing to give you lessons on how to use Instagram to hopefully impress you. I'm not letting you turn into a carrot or worse, a Tom King. Are you turning into a Tom King carrot, Doc? I have no idea. I'm not entirely sure what he was, uh, what he's referring to here. But, however, I I, like I could have sworn that I already fi followed Callum on Instagram. I think I refollowed him just to be sure. Yeah, he's, he does fanfic comics uh, with Pencil Art. He's DC Neo 2 on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Uh, def definitely go follow him and check out his art. Yeah, I, I thought I was already following him. Turns out I, I, I know I was. Maybe I got unfollowed for some reason, uh, but I refollowed him. So all good. Am I the only You're one that got a little confused by that lessons to impress you until I remembered that he did fanfic? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> lessons to impress you on Instagram. What does that mean? Hook up. Oh, we know what it it's 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 pickup <laughs> artist shit. <laughs> he tapped him on the foot. Yeah, but it is <laughs> nice. <laughs> it is a mess. No, no, no. He makes really, really, really good fast food burgers. Uh, I hope so, man. That, was, that, <laughs> that got me hungry. We got Wolf Steed 3D DC going over and over again back to the same gimmick that has proven track record not to move units. It's uh, it's always sad at this point. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You can't you can't feel bad for them, Drew, if they continuously make the same mistake over and over and never adjust their strategy or adjust to the market. No, you can't. And really, I mean, it all comes down to accountability. You have to hold these people's feet to the fire. If they're not doing their job that they wish they that they should be doing, they need to be. They need to go. Put maybe not fired or put somewhere in a corner where they're not going to disturb anyone. But uh, no, the, the, I think they need fired because the problem is again. They will, as long as they work there, they will continually try to prove that they were right in their bad decisions that put them in this position. They will keep trying them. And he, as long as they have the opportunity, as long as they're still employed there, hell, as long as they're still in comic books at all, they will try to justify their bad decisions and try to get one little bit of like sales boost out of it to be like, see, 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 my idea wasn't stupid. Yeah. And and to be clear, this isn't just referring to the topic that we're covering. They, they do this time and time again with like villains and everything. Like specifically, how many times in the past five years, six years, have they tried to make an evil Oracle a thing? They've done it like three times and it's failed every single time. Like, well, it, it just across the board, it's like these people are so stuck on what they think is right and what they want to achieve. And come hell or high water, they're going to try to make it happen. They don't care about you or anyone else. Well, it's narcissistic yeah. incompetence yep. that that refuses them to ever admit being wrong. Yeah. Um, and as long as they're still, I mean, I, look at look at Dan Didio. Do you, you, you honestly, you want to know why one of the reasons why he was finally gone because they kept fucking hiring Mark, Mark Russell was his pet project. They, he kept project. trying to make Mark Russell a thing and never, guy was never going to be a thing. It didn't matter how many times that guy failed as a writer, Dan Didio and DC was going to keep giving him work. Same that you have over it in in the with Jordan White over in the X office with Leah Williams, Tinny Howard, and Jerry Duggan. 
doesn't matter how many times they fail, they will keep getting work. All right, we got a we got another super chat from Emmanuel Reed. The moment they release the bad eggs and put their prominent characters back, yeah, the headlines will hate it, but the revenue will return. I don't think I don't think it's going to be that smooth, Gabe. I think that's no. it's, it's going to be a little bit. You got to take your lumps when you try to get back to to square one. Yeah, um, that's a it's a good point. Here's the challenge with that point. It's it, well, it's not a challenge. It's it's um, where that point is hard. Is it's easy to point out the bad eggs and root them out. You have to replace them with something as good or better. Okay, this so that's the problem they had with Didio. He got gone. Uh, you know, you could say, for better or worse, you could say he made bad decisions, but at least he made de decisions and he took a leadership role. So he pushed them in a direction. He may not like the direction, and the direction may not have been particularly good, but at least he was a leader and he chose that direction and he pushed for it and he made things happen. Okay. But a lot of those decisions were bad and he got gone. The problem is they never really replaced him with anybody who was good or better, as good or better. And so that's where that's kind of what led us to this floundering state where we say, well, Jim Lee's just can take over. Where is Jim Lee? He is radio silent and has been for a very long time. The only time you ever hear anything out of him is when he you know, occasionally does a Twitter retweet about somebody who did a great drawing or he gives a, a uh, interview to the Hollywood Reporter or something like that. Outside of that, you, you don't see him doing anything publicly. And so there's a natural per, uh, perception that you that that people are going to say, well, that means he's not really doing anything. And that might be right. That might be wrong. I don't know. But from the outside, it looks like they are completely rudderless. That that Dan Didio force to push them in a direction is no longer there. When, so uh, so on that point, this is the same thing that applies. If you get rid of half the editorial staff and half the the people that are making the decisions about vision, strategy, and everything else, that's one thing, and, I, and on many levels, that's the easier part. The harder part is finding somebody who's going to do a better job than that, who's going to come in and has the right mentality and the right mindset. That takes time. you got to find those people. And to be honest with you, nobody looking at, you know, I hate to disparage this way, but looking at DC's uh, brand reputation right now, there are not a whole lot of people that are going to be tripping over themselves, taking into those positions, knowing that they're going to step into a mess and that part of their job responsibility is going to have to bring it back up. At least anybody with talent. There's going to be people tripping yeah. over themselves. You'll have you know people uh, like Heather Antos tripping all over herself. Heather I, no, 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 hold on, words. hold on, Please, hold on. My, 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 Don't get me upset. My, my point is you're going to have a – you'll have all kinds of completely incompetent people tripping all over themselves to get that job because of its prominence. That right. doesn't make them good. It's the reason why Daniel Cherry was a terrible choice because if he was any good at his job, he wouldn't be in comics. Yeah. Well, I do know that they are out interviewing people. But that's heard from, is, Right. You can find people who are going to want those roles, but you're not going to – got to find somebody who's better. I've heard specifically that there there's a person that you guys would all know, and they were very, very successful in comic books and outside of comics, that were brought in and interviewed for the position to be like the DCs are. And they were offered a lot of money, and they said no. That it wasn't it wasn't the opportunity they were looking for. But they are going out there and trying to find the right people. But you have to have someone to accept the paycheck. And DC right. isn't in a good spot right now. It's not just about the money right now. If you if you if they manage to dig up a bunch of money and throw it at people, that's fine. But Anybody with a half a brain is knowing that they're going to step into a role where it's not just about doing something good, but that, that there's all this reputational mess that they're going to have to overcome and yeah. straighten out. It's clear yeah, because the DCEU has to hit, the DC on streaming stuff has to hit with HBO Max. You know, the comic books have to, to get better. So there's very well that, that stuff fails, especially the movies. Who are they going to play? The guy that's in charge. I have a question. Yes. Why was Jim Lee even chosen to run DC in the first place? Because he was already a board member yeah. from from the acquisition of Wildstorm. Mm -hmm. when, okay. when, run his own company. when DC acquired Wildstorm, part of the agreement was Jim ending up in a board level position. So he was the only guy that had run a comics company uh, still with the company by the time that happened. Like by the time he got put in charge. Yep. Okay, that, got, makes, that makes sense. We got Cal Lyle. Why is Tom King and T. Franklin still there at DC Comics? Tom King actually sells. You know, I hate yeah. to admit that he destroys a lot of characters, but he does sell better than 
a vast majority of DC writers now. T. Franklin checks a lot of boxes. It's the you know it's the talent's not there, but uh, you do get a, get some headlines and you do get a claim that you you hired T. Franklin. I imagine yeah. that's what those are. Darth Bobcat, what percentage of purchased comics are actually read? I'm going to throw this one to you, Drew. What's your guess on the the percentage of comic books that that leave your store that are actually pulled out of the bag and read? I'm going to say in the low end, five percent; high end, ten percent. That few? Most, I would. I'm not saying, even I'm saying most are most are honestly collected, not mm. read. Nah, well, it probably depends on the store and the spouse or what, but. You hope at least half of them are getting read, right? Yeah, I, right would hope, I would I hope. I want 75%, 80% to be read. But all no, I really, I, I, or all, yeah. But I really think, from what I have seen, when I ask people, have you read it? Oh, no, no, I just like the cover. It's like, okay, I'm hearing this over I do know there's again. a channel out there that will tell you how to, like, put your comic in a bag without touching it. <laughs> like, you're encouraging people not to read the comic book. Like, okay. Yeah, it's a collector yeah. market. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know there are also people that like they they their whole intention is they go out and buy every single book that hits each week just to have it for collector's sake, uh, and then they have like uh, four or five that they'll get an extra copy of because they actually want to read it. Uh, so yeah. I I think a majority is actually for collecting, not actually reading. That yeah, is, Katie, that Katie, is yeah, collectors are speculators. The speculator market in the in this industry is stupid, ridiculous, stupid, and uh, yeah, just. No, how many people that's are the publisher's fault. Yeah. That's the publisher's fault because they enable and they foster that. Yes. There's no reason for any comic, uh, regardless if it's a number one or event or just like the run of the mill new comic book day release to have five and six and eight different variant covers. That is all geared and targeted towards speculations and, and collectors. 100%. We There's got no the reason. doctor. Panel member says, like the smash button. Absolutely. I think we're at 93 likes right now. We got about, well, we're over 300 live streamers. We definitely appreciate everyone showing up. If you want to support the channel, you can definitely give us a thumbs up. Let everyone know we're having a good time. If you got the time, go ahead and you know, shout it out there on social media. Let everyone know we're having fun here. Also, if you want to support the channel, you can get one of these bad boys. There's a link in the video description if you want some uh, big and critical merch. We've got Fatal J, the Fatal Diva himself, the hottest YouTuber at all of uh He's not really comic books. I guess he's just pop culture. Watching the stream while I'm talking a boo boo. I think it says taking. I think it's taking. Means take it, no. yeah. It's therapeutic. T M I. But thank you. Whatever gets you through your moment, Jay. I'm glad yeah. I could be part of it. You know what I mean? You, you could have just said he was taking a trial of trial of the Amazons. We would have gotten it. <laughs> <laughs> Same we thing. We would have evacuated everything. <laughs> not wrong. It's not wrong. <laughs> All right, we got Cal Wild. It was Twitter. You followed me on Doc. Then it got deleted. Mm. Name it, Doc. Is Doc here? I think he might have walked out. But it sounds like he yeah, got he you on the on the IG now too. Definitely, everyone go check out DC Dio uh, on uh, on Instagram. Definitely, definitely support uh, Cal Wild. We got Mister DC Comics. Marvel must always be number one in comics, movies, streaming, animation, and video games. There is no competition because that's how the powers that be want it to be. Why was DC Rebirth destroyed? Do you think there's a conspiracy? Kenneth Dowling, is there a conspiracy against DC Comics? Was Dan Didio a willing accomplice behind the deal that he was sabotaging DC because Marvel had to keep their spot? I'm not an insider, so I can't speak to that. But, I mean, I've like heard you guys, Didio had his own like hit list. There are certain characters that he didn't like or he propped up more than anyone. Like you said, he I've heard he didn't like Dick Grayson. He didn't like Wally West or yeah, the him. other smaller characters because Dick Grayson, the older Dick Grayson guy, and more probably he got meant Batman was getting older. So maybe he purposely te- kept Dick Grayson at a particular ceiling to where, yeah, he's his own hero, but he's always going to be known as the X sidekick. See? What and do you think? Batman. Games are collusion here? Do you think DC Comics are just a little incompetent? Uh, column A, column B. How about that? Uh, I, I would say that there, I mean, they, I, it would be foolish to, well, how about this? The, the way, <laughs> <laughs> the, the amount of, uh, the page rates are so out of whack with, um, 
uh, inflation and everything else that you can't help that the majority of the writers and artists just flip back and forth between the two. So in a roundabout way, you could say there is some collaboration collusion just because the artists and writers are effectively almost shared between the two companies, unless you have an exclusive exclusivity agreement. So it's sort of an indirect collusion, but not in the way that I think most people think of it. Uh, but so nobody's going to necessarily trash one or the other because they have to work for both just to pay the bills and keep food on the table. So there's, there's that aspect to it. I think from the, from the decision-making process of it, DC is, is definitely its own worst enemy. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't think there's a, there's a necessarily a, 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 a concerted effort to scuttle. I mean, of course, Marvel executives are going to say, you know, let's crush DC because that's business and that's how you don't think works. they stole their but idea for Red large, Hood when, when they made Winter Soldier. I mean, they they, they try to they sabotage them. There. They're all constantly stealing each other's ideas. They're all constantly stealing each other's ideas. But Marvel's back clearly the bad directions. guy. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, but I, but right now, if I if I had to pick, you know, who is a, who is a bigger threat to DC, Marvel or DC itself? DC. Every single time I'm going to tell you, it's DC itself. They are well, in absolutely. their own way. Well, ninety nine point nine percent. Well, I, I can make an argument that Marvel is the bigger threat because whatever Marvel can do something really, really, really fucking retarded right now. And DC will do it later. And DC will abs, but it won't kill Marvel. Um, it'll it'll seriously damage it, but it will kill DC when they copy it, and they absolutely will copy it because they're just the little brother that's like five years behind copying their homework. Like they're, they're and they're too dumb to even realize like what didn't work. Mr. DC Comics might be right. Right, but that's Maybe DC's, it's a conservative that's effort DC's, to keep down that's DC's DC. choice. That's their decision making process. They're I, choosing to follow that. I, I no, I get that. I'm just saying you could theoretically argue that Marvel doing something incredibly almost suicidally retarded would be Marvel being a bigger threat. Uh, just well, because I, I they think get it first. Cool. Yeah, but I, I I think the difference is, is is in these instances Marvel is taking a risk and they're trying something that quote unquote hasn't <laughs> been tested, and then DC's watching it going, dude, that was a shit storm. Let's do it. So DC is definitely DC the, is sabotaging you know, themselves while Marvel stays making a risk. <laughs> yeah, as but, for DC Rebirth getting destroyed, DC that is was, by far its number one biggest. Yeah, <laughs> DC as for DC yeah, Rebirth, yeah, yeah DC destroyed, is its own biggest threat. Yeah. yeah. As for Rebirth getting destroyed, that was 100% a back and forth between Jeff Johnson and Dan Didio. Like, they had issues. That's where it stemmed from. It was uh, whose dick's the biggest. Yeah. The human now, we got, ego. We got <laughs> Wolfsteed 3D. A lot of younger writers are very open about having little knowledge on character history. Are we at a point where understanding the essence of characters prevents you from getting a gig? Yes. Yes, because you will be more likely... It to tell an art an editor with a stupid idea that doesn't know anything to shut up and go pick up the history of that character. That's not a hundred percent. It depends what kind of writer you are. Like it depends like Donnie Cates, he's able to do his thing in Marvel. He's writing Thor. He's writing Hulk and he's kicking ass. You know, Chip Zdarsky isn't writing Daredevil. He's written Spider-Man and now he's graduated to Batman. So it depends what type of writer you are, what type of cachet you have. You can do that. Now, some writers don't have that power or ability. It takes them years to work up that power. So, I mean, Doc, what you're saying is mostly accurate, but it just depends on what what writers are doing. It. Yeah, it's like, why wouldn't you want Peter J. Tomasi and Robert? Yeah, but that goes back to the, that goes back to the point earlier. Characters. That goes back to the point earlier about editors not knowing what to do. It's the blind leading blind. And, and and a lot of these editors are look they they are proud of their own ignorance, and they're also just incredibly. I, I hate to say spineless, but that's probably the the most accurate term for it. Um, and they they absolutely can't, but they cannot deal with anyone standing up to them. So if they know that you are knowledgeable on a character, they also know that you are likely 
to call them out for their lack of knowledge on it. And they can't deal with standing up to you. So you're less likely to get the gig in the first place. We got a pretty, this would, I feel sad about this. One. Darth Bobcat makes a pretty good point. If so few read it, then why bother with good creators from their perspective? You are hundred percent correct. You're still going to sell the same amount as long as you have the right cover on it. Or what Drew said, it doesn't matter what's in the comic book. So why, why not just go cheap on the town? Real quick, uh, the super chat before the last one about Marvel being number one. Real quick, I want to reference. I've referenced this channel about the '80s, which is my favorite decade of comics. Who is the biggest publisher in the '80s? Marvel. In fact, a while ago, Perch did a video on the top ten books by Marvel, and what was happening in Marvel at that time? You had John Byrne's Thor, Walt Simon. I'm no, I'm sorry, John Byrne's Fantastic Four, Walt Simonson's Thor, Chris Claremont's X Men, Marvel was kicking ass at that decade. And who was running Marvel? Jim Shooter. That's what we need at DC. We need someone who can knows the history of these books and can kick ass. And even today, Marvel, you no, know, now Marvel has some issues too, but their books are still kicking ass. They they take ridiculous choices. Some of them work, some don't, but they just they're doing their thing. So absolutely so what do you think about this one, Drew? Why can you blame DC for not, you know, for going cheap on the writing talent if it doesn't matter who writes it or if the book is good, if it's just going to sell because of the cover? Oh man, yeah, I trust me. You know what Darth Bobcat said. You know, it's it's true to a point, but at the same time, there's still that percentage of people who do read them, who do critique nice. them. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, you have to do it for them. We're the ones, you know, uh, reading reading them and just trying to keep them alive, trying to keep the core essences of these characters alive. But uh, man, it's it, there are days where I'm reading. I'm like, I, I was reading Trial of the Amazons Part Seven, the last part, and it's like, <laughs> God damn it, why am I doing this? I'm sorry, why, buddy. why why am I reading this? <laughs> but it's because You've I love there. because I love DC Comics. I love comic books, and I just I want the best for them. I know what what's right and these story like comic like this this is not right and it's just yeah building on that late craver says i know many people who just buy covers and and get them graded they don't read yeah i used to be like that i was in comics just you were part of the problem i said used to you were you're supposed to be a aficionado (laughs) i said used to not play with you I'm to blame. I did it. <laughs> I, I was the idiot that was still buying the the variant for the cover, and then only reading the A copy. And, but the I still bought the B, you know, B or C or Q or <laughs> what you know when you're yeah. I don't know and whatever the hell they're they're lettering it after you hit beyond the twenty fucking like ninth. Or whatever the hell, however many letters there are in the alphabet, 26? 26 <laughs> letters in the alphabet? I don't remember. I mean, hell, look at me. That's what Dynamite, Dynamite does that. Dynamite does that for any issue, any series. Like, a, I mean, uh, Barbarella number three will have 26 covers. <laughs> and each one will be slightly modified, slightly different than the other one. <laughs> well, they always have to have the, the cosplay cover, too. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's With always cover E. <laughs> <laughs> Gal Lyle says, off subject, I've never read Moon Knight. Is he anything like that MCU version because he's so boring and annoying and no. such a soy, soy boy? No, no. Do not watch this damn show. Turn it off. Watch something else. You guys don't like it? No. I didn't watch it. It didn't look good to me. I, I enjoy it, uh, but it's very I, different. I like it. I, yeah, I, I like it for what it is. It's MCU Moon Knight. It's not yeah. Moon Knight. So if, you've been, if you were a fan, I have Moon Knight uh, issues going back to the 80s like from the original run uh, that Moon Knight and what you find on Disney Plus almost completely different it's yeah, just yeah. vastly it's not even not even close so the is- current Moon Knight by Jed McKay and you're going to like it Kyle Lyle because it has some badass uh, art from Asa- uh, Alessandro Capuccio really good don't, so listen, is- don't listen to him he's negative I'm sorry no, no. Kenneth uh, no I'm sorry I'm sorry to cut you off there isn't a version where Mark Spector is battling with the multiple personality disorder where 
No, there there is like the, if there's anything that's the biggest difference here, it, it's mm-hmm. it's Stephen Grant. Like they have completely changed that. Like that character is not like. And what's what's crazy is that he is the focus of this, and it's it's kind of hard to be critical of Moon Knight in comics versus what they're doing here because each like main iteration of Moon Knight is so different from one another, even in comics. Like there there are vast differences between the books themselves. Mm-hmm. But they have taken so much of a sidestep. And and I think uh, Gabe is right. It's so much of the MCU version. And I'm okay with that to a degree. Uh, but they they blatantly changed Stephen Grant. In the comics, Stephen Grant's a millionaire. He's kind of running the operation. Here he's... he's yeah, he's he, yes, and here he's a bumbling idiot. But they openly said they didn't want to do that because it felt too much like Bruce Wayne. So they made him this British bumbling idiot. There we go. We got Wolf no, no, To be sure, the Stephen Grant... The, the Stephen Grant character is in the comics, so it's not like they made that up. Yeah, I think it just, comes from uh, the, the, that's mostly from Lemire's run with the, with the Mister Knight and everything else. I think is where they're borrowing most of it from. But yeah. if you go back to the original, it's very much Mark Spector, mercenary, shot and killed, left for dead in the middle of the spirit. The spirit uh, you know, the Conchu finds him and says, "I'm going to bring you back to life, but in exchange, you will be my avatar." It's very uh, kind of a generic template kind of superhero, but there was enough of a kind of a it, the ancient Egyptian god twist with a little bit of the mercenary crazy that I think made him separate from Batman. That you mm-hmm. you definitely got that, even though they say he's the Batman of the of the Marvel universe. No, I think there's enough there that you, people will get up on get a different flavor from it. But what you get here is very MCU. <laughs> I hate to say it, whitewashed, kind of whitewashed, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, in a strange sort of way, it, they, they very much kind of smoothed it out, toned it down, took off the edge, a lot of the edge too. And the superpowers are a little uh, right. vague or anomalous here. Yeah. Right. Wolfsteed 3D says, never attribute to malice what can adequately be explained by incompetence, Doc. It's not a plan to destroy DC. They're just dipshits. It's, yeah, Hanlon, Hanlon's razor is, is fairly accurate. Most times, until you get to people that are actually just, you know, see, never attribute to malice that which could equally be attributable to ignorance. Problem is, there's a lot of people that there's plenty of evidence that shows it is malicious. Definitely, uh, definitely has hurt DC. We got Ideator. Uh, Businesses need to stay away from politics. 2016 became a battlefield because of implied optics. One, don't divide your audience. Two, money doesn't have a class. And three, look at Disney now. You got to play. He's got a point there, Kenneth. There's there's no reason to get your audience to actually hate each other and yell at each other because then you have to make decisions. Who are you going to side with? Yeah. You know what I mean? You can't play the middleman anymore. Unless it serves the story, the three act structure with heroes versus villains. Yeah, we don't don't need all of that. Like. It's like when when DC tried to restart the Milestone universe. I don't want to get political on your channel, but they didn't want they didn't have to reference what happened recently as mm-hmm. the starting point for Milestone. They could have done something else. That was a little too on the on the nose, a little too obvious. Especially me being the the black guy on the panel between black <laughs> characters. <laughs> Right, and like, they had to change Icon, right? That's that doesn't feel like Icon at all. All of a sudden, he doesn't stand for what he used to stand for because I don't think the author could take it. that. Why have why they haven't done Icon? I don't agree. Icon would work perfect today. You want because people talk about you want different black characters, diversity within the black community. That would work perfect. You have Icon, who's a conservative, you know, stops conservative superhero, and a sidekick who is more liberal or something. That dichotomy. That could work, but I, I yeah. don't know. Got, kind of destroyed it. Yeah, I don't think. What do you, what do you think, Gabe? Are they are they uh, are they diving too much into politics? I feel like they are. I think they're they're trying to to needle people and get them to argue with each other. Uh, okay, yeah, kind of. Uh, let's talk. Let's talk about milestone for a second. There was no reason in the world, one hundred percent, no reason in the world to reboot Static's origin story. None. Regardless if they used a political context for Black Lives Matter, and then he got hit with this weird experimental tear gas, there was no reason to reboot it. Uh, if you look, if you go back and look at Milestone, Static was the standout. He got his own title. 
He got a cartoon that was very popular. He showed up later on. I think he showed up in Young Justice and some other places here and there and everywhere. He was a successful, very much in the same way that Miles Morales uh, gained uh, his own following because they took on the Spider-Man. character. Yeah. So when you say we're bringing Milestone back and everybody's like, hooray, this is a good idea. You should have stuck with them in the first place. Oh, by the way, we're going to reboot Static's um, origin story, first mistake. We're going to let Vida Ayala ride it, second mistake. <laughs> we're going to put this digital first, third mistake. I mean, you, you just, you, you basically took everything that everybody, I don't want to say everybody wants, that's broad stroke. What a lot of people who were fans of that original property wanted, you brought it back, and then you completely sabotaged it on every single level. So when you it's got, again, it's going back to the same point. DC can't get out of its own way. It is its own worst enemy on that front. I, I, I mean, I just there's no there's no nice way to say it. As uh, as a Marvel zombie that has always been a big fan of the Marvel versus DC uh, <laughs> fight. I, I, I do get to happily sit here and laugh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I, I want I want Milestone to I want more characters. I want more characters to succeed and I want more yeah. characters to get their time. I was uh, furious is an overstatement, but I was gravely uh, annoyed when it's Luke Cage's, I think it's his uh, 60th anniversary or, or no, no, it's a uh, 50th anniversary. I think 60th anniversary. They had a mini series planned this year to, but, and they pulled it. So somebody with Marvel's cachet with the amount of budget and everything else that they had available to them and for an interesting character who had his own Netflix TV show, which is now on Disney plus, yeah. And they couldn't get a mini series off to celebrate his anniversary. Yeah. That there's something broken there in in both Marvel and DC about how they make decisions and where they go with these stories. And, and, and I'm going to say it out loud: I see a lot of these both Marvel and DC seem to struggle with black characters. I don't know why. They keep I think talking they're scared about, to do anything that could get them in trouble. They're, I, well, they're scared to do anything interesting. Yeah. yeah, they're tr- they're scared to do anything interesting because it could be possibly perceived wrong and they don't want the negative press. So as a result, they have to play it safe and everyone is perfect that never struggles that that easily wins and everyone loves them and they are good at everything. And that does not make a fucking compelling character at all. As me, again, as a a African-American comic book consumer, I'm going to come out and say, I do not want a black Batman. I do not want a black (laughs) Spider-Man. I've never needed one. Like, I love these characters exactly how they are. Give me, but with black superheroes, like you said, Gabe, they they struggle point because they've been in this box Mm -hmm. to where they're black superheroes, but they can only be black. And they can only talk about black things, see? And then I don't know. Yeah, it's it, either either that or they have to rework them to try and take over the mantle of an er- another character, which I think is the case with I Am Batman and uh, J slash Tim Fox. With uh, now, if you read that run from John Ridley, it's actually not bad. It's 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 decently written, but we always come back to the same problem, which is the root of the character. Why is J Fox Batman? Well, we know. I okay, four issues. And hold I never on. Figured it out. Uh, hold on. Yeah. I now officially know that Gabe has been replaced by a pod person because there is no such thing as a good, a well-written John Ridley comic. That's it not true, man. Exist. His Black Panther true. is fucking good, yes. man. Like, yeah. it is I want to say it's yeah. okay. It's okay. Let's not. Get it's, re- it, it's good. It's steady. This first arc is it's good. Steady. Now, steady. I want to see what John Ridley can do after this first arc, though, because remember. Tiny Heesey Coat started good in Black Panther, and look what that turned into. Yep. Got a point there. But I mean, but but, but that, back to that Jace Fox Batman thing. Is, right. If you went up to somebody and say, "Why is Bruce Wayne Batman?" I'm a parents killed. You know, it's right. grief and anger and rage. The right. bat was a symbol of dread, and he wanted to embody yes. what made him afraid to make the criminals afraid to to stop. You can from rote right off the top of your head, you can explain that. If I go to somebody and say, "Okay, so why is Jace Fox Batman?" When there's already a Batman, well, he took a break for a while, and the world needs a Batman, so I just decided to do it. 
that is so paper thin weak. That is that is tissue paper weak. That, it, that I mean, if that's the best you can come up with, it's like why? And then, yeah, and the thing and then you keep pushing it, it and pushing yes. it and pushing it and pushing it. It's like I there is no real strong motivation for him to be a Batman. So why are you pushing this? Why not make him his own character? Why not do something else? There is no sense to it. And then they keep pushing it and pushing. It may be well written. The story may be kind of okay, enjoyable, but I mean, it's trying to sort of doing kind of reproducing Gotham in New York City proper. But there's no there's no rationale behind it where you can accept that somebody would drive themselves to an extreme. That's what Batman is. He's an extreme push. Somebody that's that is inhabited by grief and rage and injustice, and they push themselves beyond the humans, uh, beyond the limits of human um, standards of what a human should act like to, to dress up as a bat. I mean, this crazy talk. Why is Jace Fox driving himself to that same level? Oh, it, it was cool. The world needs a Batman, so I guess I'll just do it. Nobody gets it. Mm-hmm. Nobody gets that. That nobody in within DC gets that. That that that's not a, that's not good enough, and that won't stick. You keep pushing it; it just won't stick. I was gonna we're gonna go. This. We're gonna go to the next one. Okay. You sorry. guys have been. You guys are a little stuck on this. Get me worked up. You get me worked up again. People have talked. We, we got more people who want to get on the conversation. Common Sense <laughs> says DC animation is better than Marvel animation. Eat it, Doc. You might be the Marvel aficionado, but your animation sucks. I don't Compared disagree. DC comics. I, I don't sure. disagree with that statement in the slightest bit. You can't. It's, it's old. No. It's common Sense. Way to go there. <laughs> Cal Lyle says, last week you talked about actors playing superheroes. I prefer voice actors playing them. Do you have any favorites? If you don't know any, that's fine. I like, I really like Mark Hamill as a Joker. I like Jensen Eccles, I think, was Red Hood in the Beyond the Red Hood story. I like um, Kevin Conroy as Batman. But I really Jane. like uh, the dude that plays Hal Jordan that was on uh, Firefly. I can't remember. Nathan Fillion. Nathan Fillion. Nathan Fillion. That dude's great. So that's where I was going to go with this. I think oh, you need sorry. to get character actors to play these roles because they understand. Like when you get movie stars, you typically get a movie star because their persona comes through. Like who they are comes through. Um, and, and I will even say this about Leo. Leo's a good actor, but I never feel like Leonardo DiCaprio ever transforms himself. But you have all these like television actors and minor actors that they will go through, and there are times you don't know who they are. Like you don't realize it's them. Those are the actors that you can get. Nathan Fillion, to, to go to Wes's point, the dude has so much range. He can be freaking hilarious. He can be like your, your total like white bread piece of toast if you need him to be. And he can be incredibly intense and incredibly emotional. If you get people that can come in and transform themselves, they, they change the octave of the voice. They change their cadence. They change the way they carry themselves, their, their body language. That is a good actor. Those are the actors you want for this. All right. Kenneth, I know that you love cartoons. You're not going to not jump oh, into no. this one. Now, you? well, let me say this. Josh, you know, I, I really like him, but that's a strong take on Leonardo DiCaprio. I, I, I agree with him. Like he was Howard Hughes. <laughs> Get out of here, I, Josh. <laughs> I didn't say he was a bad actor. I'm just saying every time I watch Leo DiCaprio, I see Leo DiCaprio okay. playing a role. I don't know. I watched Titanic, and, and I was moved. Watch what's even Gilbert Grape. That's all I gotta say. Again, Wait, I didn't say he's part. bad. I didn't say he can't act. I'm just saying he doesn't transform himself. It's cool. It's cool. It's all good, man. DiCaprio would have fit on that headboard. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> but with Kevin, wants everybody to be great. Christian Bale losing right. all that weight. It's really right. But on this, on this weight. about actor, voice actors, and actors, Kevin Conroy is a classically trained actor from Juilliard, and he he, he had a lot of roles in television stuff. Before he got um, Batman, the animated series. That mm-hmm. series, how they cast it, they they told the actors, "Don't be voice actors. Do it like real actual actors." Mark Hamill used his background to p- portray the Joker. So now with Kevin, yeah, Kevin Conroy, he's my number one. Actually, my favorite Spider Man is from the Spider Man '90s cartoon. And he also started from the movies. He was in uh, was Mar- that Will Forte? Really much. Was that Will Forte or not Will Forte? Um, Will something, right? I, I can't remember his name. It, I yeah. think it's Will, but I can't remember his last name. All I know is James Earl Jones is the best voice actor ever. He was Darth Vader. You ain't yes. gonna beat that one. We got Cal Lyle. Blade MCU movie will be a Black Lives Matter movie. I think it's gonna be a Nazi. Well, writer, I, Nazi. I know the screenwriter is. is I'm sorry. Sorry, Drew, go ahead. I'll just say, I think he's going to be fighting immortal Nazis. There we go. Immortal Nazis. 
the screenwriter is from the Watchmen HBO show, and I really enjoyed it. I don't know what you guys think. Alan him. Kurtzman? The, David no, she's a fem- no, the oh, screenwriter. Did. Huh? Oh. I said yeah, the screenwriter was- for the new Blade movie for MCU, she wrote for um for Watchmen, the HBO Watchmen thing. Yeah, that's not a good sign. <laughs> you didn't like HBO Watchmen? It, uh, it was it was fifty percent good. The HBO yeah. Watchmen was fifty percent good. Everything with um Ozymandias and oh. uh you know the squid you know, and all the all the things related to the, the plan as far as, you know, what yeah. he was trapped and being in the moon prison and everything else, I thought was great. Everything related to trying and retcon <laughs> the, the one character's um, right, history yeah. and, and with the grandfather and everything else. Right. It, it, it just You're turned like into a it. convoluted mess. So, all right. Half of it was good. The other half was was terrible. Let me say we this. I would have okay. rather I would have rather give Wesley Snipes one more Blade movie to not the taste of Blade Trinity out of my mouth. That's uh, yeah, that's t- yeah, the Blade, no. the TV show, is better than that Trinity movie. That thing was awful. Yeah, Box for Media. Sticky. Why haven't any comics or films revisited Eisner's The Spirit? Other than the one bad film, it seems overlooked or forgotten. Frank Miller should not direct movies. That's all I'm going to say. This is a good scene in that movie, though, with uh, <laughs> what's her name? Rosario Dawson names in that movie. <laughs> well, uh, Rosario Dawson, I think. Maybe. Now that was that was a bad movie. They should do stuff with the spirit. I missed the. Uh, there's a couple of like the Phantom and stuff like that, but I think a lot of those, uh, you know, public characters, public domain type is, characters. There is a sizable market for pulp heroes that going back to the 30s and 40s and 50s and everything else. The spirit Green fights, Hornet. Uh, Green Hornet, Zorro, uh, John yeah. Carter, Tarzan. Uh, the Phantom Spirit Conan. fits right into that. The Conan, all those, all those pulp action heroes. There is a big market for that. That is really right now being underserved. Now, mm-hmm. in little places, you're starting to see seeds pop up, like a Blaze with the Sumerian uh, series. That's a that's Dynamite a great also movie. leans into that stuff a lot. Dynamite does a lot of that, but there's is just not enough of it. There's there are plenty of properties that are just not getting the time of day, and there and publishers are missing out. But Gabe, the point you made about Moon Knight. The spirit, that's not that character that was in the movie. Huh? But you lost me on that one. Buddy. Well, remember the point everybody made about Moon Knight, how um, Stephen wasn't... Grant. Stephen Grant, that's in the MCU show, that wasn't a Stephen Grant in the comics, right? It, I mean, it's by name, it's the same character, but because of the multiple personalities, but it's... But the, the, the way the character is constructed is very kind of watered down and family friendly. But you said Stephen Grant was like a billionaire and that wasn't in the Moon Knight TV show, correct? Correct. Huh? S- Stephen Grant. Oh, oh, was it John? Oh, okay, Josh. How did we get here? We're talking about the yeah. spirit. And what he's talking about is the representation the spirit, of the spirit which, in the right. movie doesn't match with the but spirit. But the movie was bad. Yes. But it, we, yeah. all, we all, yeah, it was bad. Uh, it wasn't that far off. I, I think that was actually the, the uh, representation not, of how the spirit not, was going down the rabbit hole. <laughs> We, we got stuff. We got stuff to take. Thank Sorry. you so much for supporting the channel. We got uh, common sense. Duke Thomas is better than Jace Fox. Questionable. Yes. Agreed. The original character. Yes. I wasn't really a big fan of the the signal, but probably better idea than what Jace Fox. Batwing is better than Jace Fox. How's well, and that? that's what I was gonna say. This is what I was gonna say earlier. Like we got to keep in mind the only reason, the only reason this I am Batman is Jace Fox is because it leaked that it was gonna be Luke Fox. We know this for a fact. Even James Tynan came out and c- confessed it. Like, if you would have had Luke Fox, this book would have been completely different. It would have made more sense. You would have had more motivation. We've got uh, Ideator. To answer Gabe, the issue with black characters is that they are treated as a variant. It's like politicians mm-hmm. thinking that different races don't prioritize job, safety, health care, health care, and happiness. I'll go with that. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Agreed. What do you think there about that? There is no Kenneth? reason to make Sam Wilson Captain America. He is he's Falcon, and that works. He's a great Falcon. Like Black Panther, Luke Cage, and God, what's the Black Lightning? These characters have a unique origin. Like you were saying, Gabe, if you tell tell someone their origin or who they are, then that's more relevant. That's a solid origin. Like Jace Fox being Batman, why are you Batman? Because 
I, I don't know. I, because the other one was Batman. I want to be Batman. I want to be a black Batman. It's like it's, because Bruce Wayne wasn't good enough. I'm going to be better than Bruce Wayne. Oh, my God. I think that's actually some lines of dialogue. I actually think he has said that in the comic, that he's better than Bruce Wayne. Which is also the same line that Jonathan Kent used against his father when they were getting back together and he was talking about being Superman. Yep. Right? Why didn't you do yeah. more to fix the Earth? Yeah. It's it's a, like a broken record at this point. Garth. I would love to see a prominent Luke Cage series. I would love to see a prominent Black Lightning series. Mm -hmm. Or in, in any of the, I would love to see Sam Wilson be Falcon and be as at an equal level or better than than Captain America, and I think he has the opportunity to do that. But what happens is by 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 doing a mantle transfer from Sam Wilson out of Falcon into Captain America, you put him in this spot where he has to continually justify holding on to that title, and mm -hmm. it becomes a distraction from what any kind of adventurous stories or heroes that he could come up against. You've 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 scuttled. I won't say scuttled is the wrong word, but you've intentionally put a, an obstacle in his path for storytellers and writers that they always have to overcome. It becomes a distraction, and instead of just letting the character breathe and grow and develop and evolve and and become the, the and, and and reach his greatest potential, now he's he's constantly having to fight this fight in the background of. Well, people say I'm not Captain America, so I have to prove I'm Captain America. I have to prove that I'm worthy. And it's like it, it, it just becomes it becomes a, just a shadow that you can never get rid of, and it doesn't make any sense. Yes. What happened? Did we lose Wes? <laughs> he said uh, he said he stepped away. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, I, you know, I think this goes back to what we see, and it's not even just the black community. I think it's any minority community. Like, anytime someone's writing a minority community, they lean so heavily into the differences of, the, of that community that it's like they forget that, hey, at the end of the day, we're all just humans. And we all like a lot of the same things, and we all want a lot of the same things, and, and family to us is the same no matter what color our skin is or what our sexuality is or, you know. like, And, and I think, like, if you take away that focus and you just keep it on, I'm a, I'm a human being trying to live my best life possible. And you decide to texture the book here and there with, with culturalism, you're going to have a good book and that's what people want. And I think that's kind of what separates what we were getting, you know, throughout the eighties and nineties when people started to dive into this and what we're getting now, it, Gabe mentioned a good black lightning book. Like I thought the outsiders book that was, recently being published like a year or so ago was actually solid. And it was nice to see Black Lightning in a leadership role and also confronting Batman and disagreeing with Batman and taking actions outside of what Batman wanted. Cause it was him asserting his, his, uh, I guess, force and saying like, no, you're not right. And it worked. And there were times that Batman even admitted like that was the right call or I had the wrong call. So there's ways you can do it. That we just, again, it goes back to the higher level. We don't have a competent leadership. We don't have competent writers. Bucket Brian think Hill tank. wrote it, right? I'm sorry, Wes. Yeah, it was, that was Brian Hill. Bucket Think Tank expands on that a little bit. He says, other black superheroes like Cyborg and uh, Mr. Terrific have lacked a set of direction or even rogue gallery unique to them. I don't even think Sam as Cap has a rogue for him that's not actually attached to Steve Rogers' original Captain Baird. They don't. Yeah, that's a that's a huge problem. You know, heroes are recognizable because of their villains. Yes, that's why Batman and Spider Man all the best. They have the best set of villains in all of comics. The, and I think I think the trap that a lot of writers fall into with black villains or black characters is only having black villains, and on the rare instance where they have white villains, it's always something racial. Yeah, it's and, like the WWF when you have like a, a black tag team, they could only feud with the other black tag team. Yes, and, okay. and 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 if they feud with a white tag team, it's it, it's uh, they don't really do that to WWF anymore. Yeah, not anymore. But back in the but back in the day, the they, domination. They, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and, and so yeah, it it, it it's I I think it does a disservice to. Yes. You know, the, the, those characters, um, you, you're you're creating a very limited scope for what their their rogues gallery can look like, whereas Batman and Spider-Man's rogues gallery run the fucking gamut. They're all over the place. 
I mean, granted, a lot of Spider-Mans are animal themed, but that's kind and of the science. science point. Yeah. yeah. And science and everything, yeah. But but that's about the only commonality between them. Uh, yeah. But they even still have he still has things like you know Tombstone. It's just a gangster. Tombstone um, will be back with the Amazing Spider-Man number one. Yeah, no, I mean, but I guess my point is they're not artificially limiting themselves in, in the process because they're I don't know if the writers are scared to do something outside that or or if they just lack the creativity to. I'm sure a lot of this fear. I'm sure a lot of them are afraid to. They don't want to get that clap back on Twitter. They don't want to be accused of being an evil bigot and before they know it, they're canceled and their life is over. Well, yeah, because the villain has to win sometimes. You have the black superhero bail against a white villain before he gets his cut back that could be taken the wrong way. This is yeah. a weird society we're in right now. I definitely see that. So that's a huge problem. Like, Mr. Terrific's awesome. They should do something with him. He's always an afterthought and everything. He's just like a deus ex machina. He shows up and he knows something and then he leaves. Well, even his name, Mr. Terrific. That was another character before. Per- right. It's almost like he's too perfect. It's almost like with the problem Superman struggles with sometimes. Superman is so powerful and godlike. He can do anything. But if you're trying to write a compelling story and na- narrative, you're not going to have it because like Superman is the nuclear option. He comes in, it's over like that. You have to really be creative to make a compelling story for Superman. We've also got Silver Comics. We got uh, Heck. He's in Wrangling Yetis here with the Yukon Cornelius and sending a big shout out to Wes and the panel from Calgary Fan Expo. Keep it tuned to they can critical and support the comic book experts. Definitely, if you're in Calgary, you're in the area, definitely go check out the Calgary Fan Expo. Go say hi to uh, to HH and and heck and the fellows at Sigma Comics. Sounds like it's probably a good time. Hey, and, and put up there up door. And, and make sure you bring one of them Yetis back. We 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 need a we need a mascot for the show. Yetis smell. I don't want them anywhere near the channel. <laughs> <laughs> you give it a fucking bath. Come on. <laughs> Wraith X Seven. I'm black, and I take original black bat characters like Batwing, Luke Fox, Signal, Duke Thomas, and Orpheus. It was killed off uh, years ago for no good reason over a black Batman any day. Agreed. It's original character. Yes. Yeah. I'll even take it a step further. The, DC had and Marvel both had more prominent, prominent as in you saw them more often, ca- uh, black characters in their regular stories in the 70s and the 80s than you do today. Yep. Without mm-hmm. question. So something something is off there. I mean, something in the in that publishing realm with the, their creative editorial decisions has gone backwards, and I that one I don't get. Well, yeah, Black Panther good. definitely needs an upgrade in his roles gallery. It can't just be him and Killmark. He definitely needs some more villains to make it. Let's get the and, one dude Claw. The claw right. is what, one of the most boring designs in. <laughs> Human history for for a villain that that I, I think that's the other big villain problem. kind of is uh, Namor in Atlantis I guess. Well, Namor is an anti-hero, and Namor fights everybody. Namor fights Fantastic Four. He's fought the Avengers. He's, he fights everybody. He but, hates everybody. I, well, I think I think that's another problem. There, there's the 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 Rogues Gallery. It's like they give them the D list designs. As well, because I'm sorry, a, a, a compelling rogue um, has a cool design, and none of none of these characters do. They just don't. They, they're just boring designs. There's nothing we that got, grabs you. Right. We got Carrie from Nerdy Girl Create. She says dealing with morons who are demanding diversity in anime and manga, the Japanese product where 95 percent of the stories are set in Japan. And we got the. Uh, the old face emoji there. Definitely check out Carrie over at Nerdy Girl Crates, especially if you're interested in uh, manga. She does a lot of coverage of manga there. Normally, there's a stream over on Nerdy Girl Crates after this one. If three or the two and a half hours here isn't enough for you, I'm not sure if she's doing that today because it sounded like she might have been under the weather this week. Yeah. And Carrie and I are going to do a stream in a couple weeks, uh, uh, maybe a regular thing, talking about One Piece. So if you're a One Piece fan, go ahead and check that out in a couple weeks. Man, that'll only take you about 17 years to get through all of it. Oh, man. I, so fully a thousand chapters. <laughs> yes, I have 1,047, I think, right now. It's it's a lot. It's a lot. We're, we're probably going to do arc by arc or volume by volume, not all at once. 
Very nice. We've got Happy Steve. Man, that is a damn good handle. I like Happy Steve. He's got a little dog in there. It makes me happy. I really enjoyed Batman and the Outsiders because it was actually a Black Lightning book. And we saw personal growth in Black Lightning and Sinnoh. Yeah, I also liked it that, uh, is it Katata? Yep. Uh, yeah, Katata was in there. One of the few really cool Asian female characters that DC has and was actually getting spotlighted. That's actually pretty competent there, Josh. Yeah, it was it was a good book. It handled the characters well. Uh, it took Duke out of this like second Jesus role that he was being put in by Scott Snyder. Like I couldn't be happier. They gave him an interesting. They like they did more with his power. They had never really fully explained Duke's powers dealing with light. It was just kind of like he could project light and create light, but they never went into it. And then here, like they balanced it and and the, he could control light and darkness, which I thought was really cool. And they started doing really good things with it, and then it went away. Uh, but Katana, incredibly underutilized character. They were doing good stuff with Cassandra. Um, it looks like they were setting her up to fully embrace who she is because she had been holding back because she didn't want to become her mother, which Lady Shiva is also in the book. Uh, it's probably the best that Ra's al Ghul has been used in 15 to 20 years. Uh, and then it had to wrap up incredibly fast, which sucked. Yeah, I think Brian Hill might have uh, exited comics for the most part. I think he's mostly doing screenwriting right now for TV and uh, in movies. Yeah, as, much, as much as we've been talking about black characters, I, I see the same problem with Asian characters as well, that somehow they have to upgrade them, change them, whatever else, to be derivative of the characters that came before. You see this now, right now with Iron Fist. They took Swordmaster and turned him into Iron Fist because, uh, you know, you see this, uh, they, they try to introduce new characters like uh, the Monkey Prince, uh, mm -hmm. which uh, DC just brought out, which is kind of okay, but you basically had to do it on the back of by putting Batman and Robin in the mm -hmm. first issue throughout the majority of the arc. It's like, it's like if you want to do an issue, there's nothing wrong with having a Swordmaster miniseries. Maybe nobody will buy it, but that's the problem of not having the character be compelling. Not necessarily because somehow he has to be the Iron Fist when somebody else is wrongfully taken. The whole point of Iron Fist is his fish out of water story. That is mm -hmm. the crux of that story. It's not about Iron Fist as the mantle and everything that goes along with it. It's 100% an Iron Fist story. And if you, if you peel back that onion and get to the core of it, Iron Fist is an anti-racism story. Because what that does is it shows that uh, Xiao Lao, which is the dragon which bestows that mantle of being Iron Fist with the power, can be bestowed on anyone regardless of your skin color or your nationality or where you come from. Yep. It, at the heart of it, it's an anti-racism story. But by, by homogenizing it, you take everything that's interesting away from that character. And it's the same problem all over again. Absolutely. We've got common sets. What are your thoughts on the terrifics from the New Age? What do you think, Gabe? It's okay. I mean, uh, nothing. Uh, I liked it. That was the best book besides Silencer. Well, actually, you never. I like Damage too. But it's a good uh, book. Uh, it, wait, yeah, yeah. It, I like. It was okay. Days. It wasn't terrible. I mean, it was okay. I, I, I kind of liked it for what it was. Sure. Yeah, it was a nice story. I, I liked how they connected them. It's kind of like the. It was the best Fantastic Four comic you could read. You know, because obviously they didn't have Fantastic Four at uh, DC or at Marvel at the time, but. I thought it was really good. I didn't think Mr. Terrific stood out as much as some of the other, other characters. I thought that was a good portrayal of Plastic Man, really. Yeah. So, Plastic yeah, Man is, is, is uh, underrated as, mm -hmm. potential, uh, as potential storytelling and material. Plastic yeah, Man absolutely. is definitely He's a seed stealer. Yep. Robin in the Hood says, kind of okay, literally every Jean Yang book ever. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> he had a really good Batman and Superman comic like at the very end that was like really spectacular, but Gene Yang's pretty solid, but he's not spectacular. You know what I mean? You know what I, I remember, mean, Josh. Yeah, I remember liking his new Superman as well, the the Asian Superman. I felt like that was a – at least it started off relatively strong. Uh, but, yeah. Yeah, he's not the worst Superman writer. But, yeah, Gene Yang, uh, he's not bad. He's Could also be not good. <laughs> Well, when you have so many bad writers, I don't want to pull him up there with like Tinny Howard. And... No, he's not Tinny Howard. He's not Vita, but he's also he's fucking jabroni Reiner X. All right. Well, oh. let's dive in. Let's dive into Kenneth's sweet spot right here. We got huge Spider Man news that's been coming out of Marvel. It looks like MJ is possibly going to be skinned alive by Mora. We've got a new <laughs> Spider Man outfit, apparently from. Uh, Norman Osborn himself, it's going to be a Spider-Man Green Goblin clone. He's going to have his own Spidey glider. 
We've also got Chasm teaming up with Maddie Pryor. What do you think about all this huge Spider-Man news, Kenneth? All right. Well, first, I reversed my position on Chasm. I think I wrote a super chat that, oh, wait, Ben Riley, he's a villain again, whatever. But after thinking about it, how, Doc, you talk about uh, character's design, it looks cool to me, so I like it. And plus, his arc in becoming a villain this time is a lot better than what Dan Slott wrote before. Well, Dan Slott sucks, so whatever. So, but yeah. <laughs> it, it, Red Goblin was bad, but yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah it was... Doctor? This is this is better than what Slot did with with Ben Riley. I'm still not entirely certain. I that Peter needs his exact opposite. Essentially, mm-hmm. um, he might as well be the goateed mirror verse version of himself. Um, he's reverse Spider Man. That's what yeah. He, he's he's yeah. <laughs> ki, 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 kind he of be Man Spider. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's man. Spider exists, and he, he he has he was he was the doppelganger from uh uh, uh what was that Infinity War? Uh, but regardless, right. no, I mean, like I get it as you've had because Venom existed in that role for the longest time as right. kind of the anti Spider Man, right? Um, and I had the same uh, motivations as Chasm. Spider Man ruined my life, and I need to kill him. Yes, exactly. And and with Venom being so completely disconnected from Spider Man mythos at this point, um, they need to have somebody to fill that role. And it looks like Ka- uh, you know Chasm's going to be that character. And it's it's a cool design. I mean, I, I, I will grant good. you that. Right. Yeah. Nice so colors. now, again though. I'm not going to go too much into it because I know we talk about this with this week in X-Men, but him involved in this thing with MJ and, or, or, and the, the goblin queen and maybe Moira and MJ. I no, just no. Well, in the articles, it mentioned that Sp- Spider-Man had a hand in the, in the Inferno storyline back in the eighties. Well, all of Marvel was involved in that storyline. So I guess in Mora, she's almost like a callback to it, that storyline as well. Now more and I'm looking at like is Mora trying to skin everyone? Like she wants to is she's trying to skin she's using people's Mor- skins to infiltrate Krakoa. That's the play. It. Right. right. <laughs> it's the second time. What do you think, Gabe? Is this a good uh, a good artistic choice? Well, which which part? Uh, you got, skinning you MJ of- alive. Um, they don't. They, well, they don't. They don't officially confirm that's how it happens. Although Moira has a precedent because she did that with Banshee. That's how she got on the island. She skimmed him. Whereas now the the problem with what she did with Banshee, besides the fact that she skinned a person, which is kind of gross, but at the same time, is how is it that the that Krakoa's portals couldn't tell the difference? She had uh, she when, had mutant DNA on her because she, she had Banshee skin. They yeah. had already. Yeah, but they, they, uh, they did that next they, course number one. Yeah, they had already established yeah. this as as a way to trick the portals all the way back in X Force number one when they were having right. But the, but as soon as they found out that that was know. a loop, as soon as they find out that's a loophole that you can get, past, you think they would correct for that problem? It, it's a or, it's a know, fucking plant. They yeah, can't. Yeah, I, I mean, so, what, what are they going to do? Like, or she to program is, the plant. So what do I what uh, in a strange roundabout way? This is almost a, a kind of an example of you know the the the, the myth of fridging, right? You're gonna you're gonna do something terrible. To, yeah, you're gonna do something terrible to MJ. Spider Man is on the island by coincidence. He's gonna find out, and that's gonna lead into the whatever this big catastrophe is that maybe blows up Krakoa or whatever was going on there. I mean, if you're gonna get there, that sure that's a way to do it. Uh, I, I think there. Are, I think Krakoa probably should have been blown up a long time ago, but that's just me. Uh, so, I mean, it can work. I, I, I don't. It seems Throw very Krakoa extreme. Which, yeah, it seems very extreme and and kind of indicative of the extreme things we've seen done, like when Jerry Duggan did that X Men Green thing, and he had Nature Girl like slaughtering people over plastic bags. It's very strange. So, I, I, my, my the way I'm picking up out of this, what I'm picking up out of this is. It seems like that X office is sort of running out of ideas and maybe that's sort of preaching to the choir when I say that. And they're just looking for ways to shock you, to keep you interested. Um, 
I, I'd much rather they kind of develop a, a more interesting conclusion to the Krokoa era. But if shocking you is all they have left, then I guess it, it makes sense. Chasm, I think, is a... I like the idea the idea of the design. In many ways, I can, I can see how they can spin Chasm into the same relationship dynamic between... I know it's DC, <laughs> but between uh, uh, Flash and Eobard Thawne. You know, it's an irrational hate of blaming somebody for how things have turned out in your life. You just are so obsessed with killing the person who you blame for everything that goes wrong that you turn into this uber villain. I don't mm -hmm. think, I doubt that they would go that far with Ben Riley, but maybe they will. So that there is a potential there and there's a there's a template for getting that done. I just don't know that they, they would have the, I don't know that they have the, the grit and the, <laughs> the yeah. fortitude to pull that off, but you could get there. Uh, the, the, the new Spidey suit, uh, I don't, with the emoji mask, I don't even know what to do with that. That's just <laughs> yeah. Here's oh my has Spider Man had more costume changes than any superhero in history? Batman's had a lot, but he's well, been around twenty years longer than or okay. So it's back okay, Batman. Yeah, twenty years longer than Batman or than right. than Spider Man. Twenty five. But I don't. Uh, the emoji mask killed me. Yeah. I, when I saw that, I was like, I don't. If I just fire everybody involved in that decision because Blackwood says that they should skin the riders. I am I am not <laughs> against this idea. I thought it was a good um, point. But you know what? Hey, look, if, if if Mary Jane must be sacrificed to nuke the entire Hicksman era off the face of the earth, then so be it. I, I, I will as as much of a Peter MJ you know fan I am uh as long as it's real MJ and not fucking movie MJ. Oh but I, I either not MJ or the chick that looks like a foot. Um, the um, yeah, I I will I will accept her sacrifice. It is for the greater good of all comic fans. Drew, you're you're really into redheads, right? <laughs> oh yes, yeah. <laughs> what do you think about all this ginger side? They're gonna skin another redhead. Ginger, uh, turn him into villain, skin another. I wouldn't be surprised. I, like like Gabe said, they've already established a precedent of her doing it. But it, it, what's, was it Banshee and Redhead it? sometimes? What's it? Yeah, right. Banshee. Is, yeah, Banshee. Uh, well, he said his hair is a gold. He called his hair was gold. Uh, was strawberry point. blonde. One. Yeah, there you go. Got skid. <laughs> Moving up. But it just no one's telling <laughs> the editors aren't telling these writers, hey, uh, this might be a step too far. You may want to reel this back in, <laughs> like. For, like my character, I'll, I'll I'll I mean, I go Yeah. Explain to your six year old what does he what does she mean when she's gonna wear her to the party? <laughs> well, this is what, <laughs> what it means, little Johnny. She's gonna cut her skin off and then wear it as her own skin with I mean, ball, yeah, with a dress. Once again, it comes back to gives a new meaning to what are who are you wearing? Absolutely. Um, that they ask you on, on, on the red carpet. Um, well, it's Banshee's head and Mary Jane's body. Yeah. What? <laughs> Some Buffalo Bill shit. Yeah, yeah like Buffalo, it. Nora is Buffalo Bill, exactly. Yes. <laughs> but Wes, uh, you, you, well, Wes you joke that if Peter Parker was destroys Krakoa and everything, but maybe that is the thing. Maybe that's what... We That's saw the promo. It said, "What did you do?" And it said, "You know, the Fantastic Four are mad at him. Mary Jane's mad at him. The the Avengers are mad at him. It never mentions the X Men. They might not exist anymore. Maybe he destroyed." He them. killed them. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, you still have the Martian colony. So. Unless he's hitting both planets, uh, that's there's still got some people out there, right? I wouldn't mind him doing that too. Although I am rooting for Fei Long to win on old Phobos. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, we don't need Mars. It's it's not uh, helping us anything. So right. it probably affects our tides or something, but it's nothing we wouldn't get over. Uh, well, we uh, we, we can nuke Mars while we're at it. Yeah, <laughs> everything. Yeah, sure. Did you you're saying that Kirsten Dunst looks like a foot? Yes. <laughs> Jesus, Doc. her face looks like a foot. No, that's not what you <laughs> meant. Doc. You're talking about MCU. That's not that's not Kirsten Dunst in MCU. That's not MCU MJ Doc. That, I, that's why I said current movie MJ or okay. the one that looks like a foot, because there were the only two MJs in the movies. Because remember the the to, the Andrew Garfield ones had the 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 redhead being a blonde, and the Toby right. ones had the blonde being a redhead for some inexplicable reason. Well, I'm okay. not going to say Kirsten Dutt's like the prettiest woman in the world. She doesn't like a foot. She's a nice looking lady. She looks like a foot. 
I mean, I'll I'll take her over the one that looks like a boy any day of the week. So yeah. Oh, one looks like a... Are we saying uh, what's her name? The new is Zendaya. Very handsome young man. <laughs> oh my god! Man. I I don't know. have you seen pictures of Zendaya on a red carpet? Like she looks uh, look um, she looks pretty good. I haven't seen that, but what I've seen in the movie, I'm like, that's, I guess, man, I guess he was in the voice. Like, oh, oh, it's a girl. Oh, crap. It's it no supposed clue. to be ironic. Hmm. Drew, you didn't get it. I hate to tell you, but the, the oh. big the big fashion trend right now is kind of like this androgynous look. Baggy clothes, baggy pants, oversized sweaters. Like, it's, that's what that's I've been doing for right years. Yeah. yeah, it's called the Ezra Miller. <laughs> uh, well, Miller, exactly. I throw a little you lipstick on, people. some shadow eyeshadow, and they don't know if I'm a boy or a girl. And we all know how that turns out. Apparently, that breeds uh, <laughs> lunatics. <laughs> this is start beating up all of Hawaii. Like there? I, there's a the whole joke. Island. There's there's a comment here that would absolutely get you demonetized, and I'm going to shut well, the fuck up. <laughs> but, Oh, Tevi reminded me. We got a couple of super chats here we need to get to. We got common sense. Carrie Andrews did the perfect fish out of water for Pay, who was supposed to be the next Iron Fist. Then Alyssa Wong came and screws Andrews and Pay over. Pay is a cool character. They actually put a lot of work in all that character game, and there's no payoff. Yeah, no payoff. Unless we forget the Danny Rand giving up the mantle of Iron Fist. That was Larry Hama that did that. And I, and I like gave that. it over to Okoye, though. Yeah, he, he just said, oh, I don't need this anymore. You can have it. He <laughs> said you were a better Iron Fist than me, and she was Iron Fist for five minutes. For five minutes and did almost nothing with it. it was... <laughs> well, Okoye is a, a warrior, so. Yeah, but Larry, Larry Hama has been around forever, and he's a much better writer than that. That one stinks of editorial interference. In fairness, Larry Hama in current year, is not Larry Hama of anywhere from the 80s through the early 2000s. And he yeah, actually encouraged the race change of Snake Eyes. He 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 was all for yeah, that. Yeah. It's like, yeah. wait, what? Larry? Really? It, it just... They would watch Snake Eyes. I didn't watch that movie. It's, it's available on the TV. Old Man That's... Larry is very, very stupid. Younger Man Larry was a very talented writer. I'm just amused with Wes's grandpa moment. It's available on the TV. <laughs> yeah, it is. I got I got it's HBO now or is it it's, HBO Go? It's one or the other. It, it's got Snake Eyes. I'm like, well, that's like one of my five favorite fictional characters of all times, but I'm not going to watch it. Is that it's your so is that your Snake Eyes, Wes? Exactly. It's like watching that Conan reboot with Momoa. Yeah. Honestly, it would have been a, here with that it, crap. It would have been a very solid Storm Shadow origin movie because he just becomes Storm Shadow. Well, Storm Shadow is a good character. They all, obviously they except for they have, have a character. Storm Shadow. That's true. So, it, we got Blade Kramer. If they do skin suit MJ, please do a video with Aaron Sparrow. I really want to hear the shaking his head response to the story from him. Yeah. I'll do it with Aaron. Aaron, I, I covered this. He he wanted to talk with me about it yesterday, but I'd already done it. But he, 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 had, he has opinions. So if they really do skin MJ, I will absolutely bring Aaron on the channel. We'll talk about it. And I'm sure he will he will love the story. I'm gonna sneak that into one of my scripts and see if Aaron sees it and see what he says. Like GR Absolutely, skin. you should definitely have the hero skin somebody. Right. Try wear as a suit. He, Aaron didn't like the clone saga where Peter Parker backhands MJ. He wasn't a fan of that. So. I mean the the part about the, the, the whole part of that scenario that I don't get is they've already set it up that the Eternals think mutants are an evolved form of deviant so i know we've got this avengers versus x-men versus eternals thing coming up if you, if you need an excuse to kind of blow up krakoa i don't know why you just defer it to that that's a plausible story point i can see how that the eternals might get their knickers in a twist and decide okay well deviants are getting out of control we got to wipe you out why would they need to go to this extreme if this is if this is really what's going to happen that, that spider Man's going to be the crux of it i i it it either smells like just shock value for its own sake, or they're trying to pull like a like a civil war kind of scenario, where they have him be like the linchpin that blows everything up, and then that creates a whole different dynamic. I don't think the current writers' rooms, especially in the X Slack, have the. I don't think they've got the talent to pull that off if they're trying to do like another civil war scenario. All I know is I'm going to be rooting for Peter Parker to blow up everything. I don't want to root for the Eternals. I hope it's Peter that kills all of them. 
I don't think I, start putting them in my favorites. I am rooting for the comet to come and destroy the entire 616. Earth. <laughs> you want a DC style crisis, don't you, Doc? You want a I, 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 I want an actual infinite crisis on. Uh, you know what? No, no, no. What I, what I really want is for Franklin Richards to wake up from like the fucking Panamanian flying squirrel scroll flu, um, and it, we find out that everything since about three weeks before Civil War One was him hallucinating it into reality because he's a reality warper. Right. And then hey. but everything resets back to there because everything since about civil war has been down fucking hill. This is a little time after civil war. Still. We got Tevye Smoker here. I'm sorry. It took me a while to get to this. Tevye. Why does Marvel hate Mary Jane and Peter Parker as a couple? Why is that Kenneth? Why do they hate them? They're, they're a lovely couple. They should be married and have kids by now. Because Peter Parker's first and true love is Gwen Stacy. That's why she's not with us anymore. <laughs> he needs to move on. It's been 50 years. <laughs> I, okay. Hey, uh, so I, I, I blame Joe Casada. That's why I blame Joe Casada for that. By, by the okay, way, we, we do Kisada, right? we do have a, one interesting um, question in the chat since we brought up the fake eyes movie. What was more offensive? Fake eyes not shutting the fuck up for the entire movie or um uh, 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 Master Chief taking his fucking helmet off. I don't know. I've never seen. I it. haven't I seen it. Uh, Halo, so I would say I would go yeah. with Snake Eyes. So I, I, well, apparently, nobody else is seeing Halo either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had Amazon Prime. I got rid of it. It wasn't worth it, and then I'm, I'm kind of glad, especially with all that Lord of the Rings stuff. I love that stuff too much. I don't know why they hate Mary Jane and Peter Parker. It's another thing where you can't have. Dick Grayson aged up because it makes Bruce that Wayne seem old. You can't have Peter Parker get married and, and be in a relationship because it makes him old and he can't be a college student anymore. It's like the dude's in his thirties. Like let it go. Yeah. He, he can be a he can be a responsible adult and a hero at the same time. What was the arc where Peter Parker was a teaching assistant in, in college? Was that big time? Um no, yeah, Straczynski well, was running. Was Straczynski was running that, wasn't he? He, he? he was. He was. Yeah. He was. He was a high school teacher during Straczynski's run. He was teaching in college during slots. On and off, he taught in college during slots run. Right. Well, at least that's a good part for Peter to be, where he's still young, but he's mature enough that he can teach the next generation. That's the good part. Don't have him be a billionaire or anything, which, of course, I didn't hate that idea, but I think that's the best part for Peter Parker in his art to be, where he's teaching. He should be able to be a billionaire because he's so busy saving people, he always drops the ball in his personal life. That's who the character is. Right? I'm not a, I said I'm not opposed to it, but him teaching the secret would probably be more apropos for his art. Mm -hmm. You can handle it. Thank you very much, Debbie. We've got Defenders of Comics. We at Defenders of Comics love your stuff, love the live streams and daily content. Thank you for your love for comic books. Well, thank you very much for supporting the channel. Really appreciate that. And, uh, you know, appreciate, uh, really enjoy putting out all the daily content, doing two videos a day, even with my bum shoulder. This thing is holding me back. I'm still going to get it all out. So thank you very much. We've got a question from what we got. With the Ezra Miller mess, should DC totally reset all the DC EU? Or do you still uh, sign Cavill and move forward with Godot, Cavill, Momoa, and uh, Levi and Shazam? If they wanted to, that would be a good precedent because this thing with Ezra, like he's the focal point of that movie. It's not a situation where you're replacing Kevin Spacey for doing a, a short role, replacing with Christopher Plummer, and it doesn't affect the movie. He still gets an Oscar nomination. No, Ezra Miller has been the flash for this movie and for this iteration of the DC Universe and movies. So if this and if Zaslav wants to, if he's serious about cleaning house and rebooting everything, that would be a good excuse because you can't just re, if you get rid of Ezra Miller, you can't just recast that movie. Like because actually, actually you can. You can. He goes back in time and changes something very, very early. And then Ezra Miller isn't the Flash, and there's somebody else is the Grant Flash. Grant Gustin is the Flash. Yeah, Grant Gustin is the the actual Barry Allen for the rest of the fucking movie. You just literally, honestly, at this point, I would be fine with them just taking a picture of Grant Gustin's face 
and just superimposing <laughs> it over like fucking South Park style over top of Ezra Miller's face in every yeah. scene. <laughs> Don, I see what you're getting at. Uh, see, this is a this movie. I'm sorry. This movie is two hundred million dollar budgeted movie, and you're go- talking about reshooting half of it. That's a lot of no, money. no. I'm I'm talking about them literally like cutting out a picture from a magazine of Grant Gustin's face and sticking it over top of Ezra Miller's. They don't even have to attempt to make it look good. <laughs> and then just have him. I mean, there is a precedent. Record. There is a precedent for dumping a lead in a movie and just restarting over scratch. I mean, the the most famous one I think most people would recognize is Back to the Future, where Eric they Stoltz only, was, they only shot for two weeks. Plot. Yeah, they didn't shoot the whole movie. It was yeah, just but, like the first. Yeah, but they shot they shot enough that it would it was a massive overhaul to try and just bring somebody in and have to do all that over again. That well, wasn't that wasn't cheap. But I, I, I didn't spend the whole money. But see, they didn't shoot the entire movie. They didn't spend the entire budget yet. Well, the in fairness, wanted Michael J. Fox. Yeah. In fairness, we already saw that happen. Thank God, Fatal J is not here because yeah. we'd be talking about the fucking Justice League. Because they did end up reshooting like half the fucking movie. They did the same thing with Han Solo. It didn't work out very well for it, I know it. I know it didn't work out well. I'm just telling you, they've done it, and it <laughs> it's not. I do precedent. think. I do think they should probably reboot the DCEU totally, and they should restart, and then add elements that work that they like from the other stuff. There's yeah. No reason I, to get a new new Wonder Woman. You have a Wonder Woman that works. You have a Shazam that works. Marvel's done this when they're adding elements from the Netflix universe and the Fox right? movies and stuff. Yeah. And people like that. So I don't think they really need to reboot everything, but they do do need to reset something, Josh. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I will look. I think the you can't look at the the Netflix universe and Marvel and call it you know apples to apples because the intention was that all that was connected anyway. But with this, I think there's two things you have to look at. So much of what they're trying to do with this current universe isn't working, hasn't worked, and they're having issues. And I think you need to wrap up what you have here and move on. And the reason I say wrap up, like I think we all love Cavill and Gal Gadot especially, but we also have to be realistic. They're either reaching their 40s, 40s, pushing their 40s, in their 40s, like all these actors are aging. If you go 10 years from now, they're going to look older. If you go another 15 from years from now, they're going to look even older. It's going to be like Grandpa or Grandma Wonder Woman. Like We don't want that. So wrap up what you have, get another movie or two out of each of these, and then relaunch your universe because that's what they want. They want a universe. Just completely relaunch, get younger actors, and go with it. Teen Justice. Yeah. Sure. I've said this before. Re- reset everything after Avengers Endgame in the MCU. Reset everything. Get, I think that's get kind of what they're going to do with recast the, it, Get a new Strange. Captain America. Get a new Iron Man, and do those classic stories from the comic books. I want an Avengers under siege movie. That's what I want. You got Sam Matthews, your new Captain America. No. <laughs> <laughs> He's not my Captain America. No. Sorry, no. Be Captain America Four is the star. Let's get out of here. Don't care. <laughs> All right, Doc. We have to do terrorism. Yes, that's what we want. Why are we yeah. getting Phoenix as Thor's mom series? You're a comic book retailer. You work at a comic shop, Drew. Why? Why are they che- getting Phoenix as Thor's mom? They're out of ideas. I mean, they've got nothing. They're letting Jason Aaron do it, whatever the hell he wants. They're not. No one. They wanted to make this one million BC feel important, so they had to do something. Yeah, they've been trying to do that since they did Generations, which was Marvel's answer to, to Rebirth. And it just, no one's wanted it. No one's really, no one really cares for it. I mean, people like the aesthetic of it. Yeah, but the story, it sucks. There's really nothing there. There, It's like, it's like Spider-Gwen. There's nothing there. She looks cool. Great. whoop de do. It just, uh, uh, Jason Aaron doesn't have a good story here. It's stupid and it just, it ruins Thor, honestly. He, There's a good try- They've been trying to protect Jason Aaron's delicate sensibilities from this stupid bullshit going all the way back to legacy. Well, you saw what happened to him with that Code book. Someone called him out and he apologized and gave his money away. Yeah, well, he's, he's, a gi- he's, he's a giant people. fucking pussy. Yeah. <laughs> How is Donny Cates making that work? Did Donny Cates, has he referenced that in his room? No, he's not. He is not referencing that at all. I think. Well, he re- referenced it once, I believe. No, uh, yeah, he... he in, in like a the passing comment, yeah. In but. in the thing with um, the arc where uh, the the God of Hammers arc, yeah, where they did uh, Angela was there, 
uh odin was there loki was there and they were all sitting in the in the woods and his mom was there and she said well i may not have been the one to birth you but blah 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 right I I your mom. That. yeah you're right yeah. and that was the only reference of acknowledgement honestly he should have just been like fuck you i'm your mom um <laughs> and, and, and honestly donnie cates should tell jason aaron to go fuck off because <laughs> I'm sorry, Donny Cates isn't exactly the most imitating, intimidating person, but Jason Aaron's a giant pussy and he'll back down. Absolutely. We got common sense. You think Peter's Peter Parker's going to uh, retrieval after he blows up the X-Men? Marvel needs <laughs> Elliot Boggs, a.k.a. Magician, to use his reality manipulation to reboot the X-Men. What? Uh, what? Retrieval <laughs> spell me off. Is it revival? I think that they are going to revive Reviled. Mary Jane. I think he meant resurrect her by stating oh, okay. that she's a, a mutant and we never knew it. And then she's not going to leave Krakoa after Peter blew it up and she's going to blame him. I think that's why they're going to be mad when they're on the outs. Would you accept that, Kenneth? Cool. I, whatever floats his boat. <laughs> Oh, you're the Spider-Man fan. I I just want to correct comment. Comment. Hold on, just one second. Common sense corrected himself. He said retire. It's supposed to be retire. He's going to retire. Okay, much makes much more sense. I don't think he's going to retire, but I wouldn't mind him retiring with with MJ and being like a a mentor to Miles Morales. Nope. (laughs) He's like nope. Because you know what, Aaron Sparrow made this point about Peter Parker. Peter Parker. And his sense of responsibility would not allow him not to be Spider-Man. He w- he's not going to work with other people being Spider-Man. Everything. That's his responsibility. That's what Uncle Ben instilled in him. So in that work of in, in that lo- logic, no, no. They should resurrect Uncle Ben, and Uncle Ben should chastise him for being irresponsible, for being Spider-Man. No, then no, no. They'll, they'll bring back Ben to... to to tell Miles you're a better Spider-Man than Peter ever was and and, and, and to validate Peter or to validate Miles. He'll be there to validate Miles, denigrate Doc, Peter. You're going to give Gabe a heart attack. Look at him. He's already got the shakes. No, I, no, no. Let me tell you something. You're much better Spider-Man than my nephew ever was. Fuck my nephew. You're the real Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> Get Peter out of here. We got Spider Man with him. we got Steven Caldwell. Make MJ oh a boy. God. They'll be together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah. I, I, I'm Josh. offended. I'm offended for Josh. <laughs> no, he's. I'm, you know, it's funny because it's true. <laughs> like that's what would happen. Like uh, for real. I mean, I, I know, I know, I, I know. This sounds like a broken record, but I'm going to put it out there anyway. The one of the issue, not, it's not the only issue. There's plenty of issues to go around, but they're the same issue that we have with Marvel is the same issue we have with DC. Which I know it sounds like a broken record. Manga's got that figured out. Is in manga when you have the big, epic, long, long-running stories, the characters progress, they age, or they mature, or life goes on. On without them, both when the characters around them, ecosystems, and everything that's happening around them, there is a sense that life moves on. The trouble that you're having with Marvel and DC right now, which is eventually over time, you, and I think I think I said this last time, you get stuck in this time loop where you're just living the same year or two over and over again. It's a different villain, it's a different event, it's a different conflict, it's a different fight. But eventually, what happens is because Marvel and DC won't let their characters move on, won't let their worlds move on. They take the toys out of the play out of the toy box, they make a big mess, and they just put it right back in the same toy box. And then you're just starting over again. So what's happening is we're struggling, and you can hear it on this on the stream. We're struggling to find new ways to be for the same character to be to be interesting. And, it, and unless Marvel and DC can figure out a clever way for them to let the characters move on, like I like you pointed out earlier, is when uh, uh, Peter Parker got old enough to like teach high school and be a little bit older and maybe he does get married and maybe he does have a kid who happens to be a little girl like oh by the way look she's manifesting spider powers may that parker, was yeah. right that was progress may park moving forward and then what did they do oh that's enough of that we're going to reel it back 
and then you, you, it feels like you you take one step forward and then one step back, and you're just stuck in this loop. Eventually, you're gonna you're you're running out of ideas to be interesting, and that's what's happening here. Is you need more, you need things to change so that you can grow and branch those stories out. And until Marvel and DC figures out either a clever way to do that by splitting into a different universe or actually letting the characters mature and grow, you're you're never really going to get much more than just rehashes of the same ideas over and over again. All right, fellas, it's time. It's time. This is a Kenneth Dowling special. We're going uh -oh. to the superhero fight. Kenneth is right, Gabe, sure. are you ready to get schooled? You are going to eat it. Kenneth is going to eat your lunch, sir. Who would win, Batman Beyond or Spider-Man 2099? We got Miguel O'Hara versus oh my goodness, the, the Batman version. Terry McGinnis. Terry McGinnis. The <laughs> Batman version. What the, the fuck, Batman. Wes? <laughs> my story is the real thing, man. <laughs> Embarrass me on my own show, Josh. <laughs> oh, uh oh, oh! Did we lose one? Gabe, are you contemplating, or are you going to answer this? Oh, <laughs> you, you went silent. <laughs> I thought that was me. No, I'm going to take a leak, man. Uh, oh, okay, sorry. Uh, so I can pee. Well, let's see. So <laughs> they're both in the future, about the same time frame. So their technological right. uh, advantages are about on par or close to it. Right. Uh, if if we're talking Batman Beyond, where where Bruce Wayne is backing him up from the Batcave with tactical yeah. information, I think yeah. I got to give it to Batman Beyond. Now, if it's like the Batman Beyond Neo Year One ish a series that just came out with uh, Kelly and Lansing. Where Bruce Wayne isn't around anymore, he's gone. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I would give it to Spider Man 2099. So Terry McGinnis with Bruce Wayne, they've got the edge. Without Bruce Wayne, I got to give it to, to Spider Man 2099. Yeah. Oh, you know what? For me, this one's a hard one. I, I like Batman 2099 or Batman Beyond more than I like Spider Man 2099. Mm -hmm. um, me too. <clears throat> I like the design. I, I'm a very big fan of that very simplistic design that the Batman suit has uh, versus the slightly busy um, and like almost armored helmet version of, of Spider-Man. Um, but Terry without Bruce sitting in a chair helping him mm. is kind of ineffective. Um, and that's, that's disappointing. He, he doesn't know what he's doing now. He learns as he goes along, but Miguel kind of already starts as a very competent hero. Um, I would honestly, I'd have to say Spider-Man 2099, it would win in a fight, but I, I'd prefer it to be Terry. So that's me. How about you, Drew? Honestly, I'm gonna go with Spidey 2099. Uh, I mean, look, Miguel is—he's already enhanced physically without the suit, and is a brilliant scientist. Yeah. However, Terry—he needs the suit. He needs Bruce, right? And he doesn't have Bruce's brilliance. I mean, Miguel is getting the, the upper hand pretty quickly because he's already as smart as Bruce and has is already enhanced. That's the way I see it. Josh. Josh. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to shock everyone and kind of uh, go with Spider-Man 2099 as well. Um, uh, and yeah, I think that the tactical aspects of Bruce sitting back there uh, behind Terry makes makes a huge difference. I think if you eliminate that, you know, it, this, the fight becomes very one sided. Um, also, I think with Miguel, he's he's like, I mean, it, Terry's suit has has benefits and stuff, but he doesn't seem to utilize them. And I feel like uh, Miguel always did like uh what was it the the spinnerets and he could like paralyze people and stuff I, I think a lot of that would come into play and i think he he'll be tactical in his own right just because he as doc said he's he's kind of already established as a decent hero on his own so yeah i, I think uh i think he gets this <laughs> everyone's going to spider-man 2099 now even though i'm wearing the spider-man shirt let me evaluate everything now with Batman Beyond, Gabe, you're right. With that suit, it gives him an edge. Without it, he's done. Without the Batman Beyond suit, he is done. Yeah, in, in a couple of different ways, Batman Beyond is sort of like an Iron Man Jr. Yes, yes. Where yeah. Bruce Wayne is Jarvis. Yes. 
Yes. Right. So imagine Iron Man without Jarvis in the AI. I mean, he would be effective to a point more in a physical brute force way, but without the AI backing him up to do the analysis and the tactical assistance, he's not as effective. Okay. I'm going with Batman Beyond, and here's the reason why. Because Terry McGinnis, now we we were established in the cartoons and in the comics, he's not, he doesn't have the technical, he doesn't have the detective skills of Bruce Wayne. He has natural fighting ability. And during the series, he gets martial arts training from Bruce Wayne and other people that Bruce Wayne refers him to study under. So he has the fighting skills. The suit definitely gives him the enhancements. It gives him gives him superhuman physical abilities. And Josh, I would disagree with you. I think Terry McGinnis does depend on the suit, but in the series, he depends too much on it. And Bruce Wayne has told him that many times. And that's why they had an episode where it was Terry McGinnis versus the suit that was controlled by an energy being. So he had to learn to use his, utilize his other skills and not depend on the suit too much. Now, Spider-Man 2099, is, he has the power advantage. He is stronger than Batman. But Miguel O'Hara does not have fighting skills. He doesn't have fighting skills. He depends a lot on his powers. And Miguel O'Hara does not have the spider sense that the other spider characters do, or Peter Parker. That's the one thing that separates him from Spider-Man. Power, he may can overpower him, but I'm going with Terry McGinnis' fighting skills, the skills of the suit, and with Bruce Wayne in his ear, I'm going with Batman Beyond. Now, it could go the way without, this is without the suit. Batman versus Iron Man. <laughs> it is. Yeah. <laughs> What's well, actually Spider Man versus Iron Man? Spider Man versus Iron Man. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Good point, Mr. DC Comics. We got another one for you, Kenneth. Oh. Common sense. Who would win a fight? Otto Octavius as Superior Spider Man versus Kirk Langstrom as Batman from Justice League Gods and Monsters. I'm not Where's familiar with Kirk Langstrom as Batman. I'm not. But it, it was. <laughs> It came out like 10 years ago. It was like an Elseworlds animated movie they did and a comic book one shot where uh, Man Bat became, but before he was Man Bat, became Batman. Yeah. Yeah. Who I did? tell you what, Otto Octavius is period Spider Man with Peter Parker, and you said this too, Wes. He, he tends to hold back because Spider Man is very, very powerful, not overpowered like Superman, but Octavius is Spider Man. He knocked uh, Scorpion's jaw clean off at full strength like clean off blood spider everywhere and beat wolverine to a pulp because he doesn't hold back like peter does so, kirk langstrom's insane hmm. like what i see i don't i can't because i don't know what kirk langstrom is batman i don't know his power set like is he like very very powerful or something i don't know drew what is it is he really uh, i know he he, he, I think he has a vampire bites. I think he, I think he yeah. actually has like wings and all that. Yeah, he's not. I think he's strong, but not that strong. He can fly, I think. But it's it was very strange. But I, I would I would take Otto Octavius in this Me situation. Too. I think Superior Spider Man. Yeah, he'd use all of his arms to catch him in the air, destroy him. <laughs> very good stuff. Yeah. Thank you very much for supporting the channel. We had another. Uh, Doc is a Doc Ock is a jerk. I thought it said Doc is a jerk. And that's why I, <laughs> I am. Damn I mean, it, I Jenny. am. But why are you still the Ock in there? We had a good point to be made. <laughs> so we only have time for one more topic, but I do already have videos about the Thor: Love and Thunder movie and about the the Trial of the Amazons Wonder Girl issue with Doc. So I've already got those covered. We'll talk about the death of the Justice League. It's coming next week. It's big time, Gabe. You are the Weird Science DC guru. Are you excited to review this comic book? <laughs> <laughs> I, well, okay, so I, I've got a. So I, I've talked to people who have already received well, like super advanced versions of it, uh, and read it. And the response I get is that it's, uh, it's 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 good in that Joshua Williamson knows how to kick off an event. Now the yes. the. The problem that we typically wind up with very frequently is he doesn't know how to stick the landing. So 
So he'll start strong, but then he'll peter out toward the end. And so what I'm hearing from this first issue, I haven't, I'll be getting it shortly. I haven't read it yet. What I'm hearing is that's very strong. Uh, start. How Drew's read it. Would you agree with that? It's a, yes, it's a good start. Uh, he, they do fulfill the promise of the title. And so it's like, okay, he, he's, he's very strong. <laughs> so let's see what happens. But I, but I go back, I go back to the, the thing that I think we talked about last time is, Number one, everything I'm hearing tells me that Joshua Williamson is not getting editorial support and he's kind of had to pull the whole thing together on his own. Now, that's not to say that it can't be a good event, but that's not how you coordinate among lines. That's that's bad business practice. That's bad process. So he's going to do his best and I'll give him credit for doing his best. But my my expectations are immediately lowered when I hear stuff like that. Second, he, Williamson does have a reputation for not sticking the landing. Yep. So if you can start strong, that's fine. But we've seen that before. So we'll see how that landing sticks. The third part of that is um, some of the stuff that we've heard behind the scenes. And most recently, Jeff Thorne, who is the Green Lantern writer, made, you know, made us think that, you know, they killed off um, uh, John Stewart and he wasn't told. <laughs> <laughs> they're killing him <laughs> off his main character and he had to hurry up and finish off. He just posted and I'll see if I can find a link and post it somewhere that, um, that where he, he has like a newsletter or something where he kind of spills the tea on how that all went down internally. So, and it's an interesting read. I'll have to go back and go through some of the details and I'll post it up for anybody who wants it. And maybe I'll put it on Twitter or something like that. Um, so that tells me already that the coordination is breaking down a little bit. So that, that does not bode well. And then the, of course, the fourth thing is that you have this, <sighs> future state-ish uh, Justice League taking over, which is Yara Floor, it's Jace Fox, with all the stuff that we've already talked about, it's Jackson Hyde, who really needs to be in deep therapy and on medication uh, for all his <laughs> rage issues, and then uh, also um, the the Flash from the future, whatever whatever that, that person's name, I think it's a they or a them, or whatever the pronoun. JLQ. Yeah, it, it's basically okay. JLQ, which is what came out of the the brown robin from last year so the some of these are just untried untested characters or characters who had brief runs that didn't yara floor in particular didn't work out well so you're trying you're killing off the uh the, the justice league in a strong start from a writer who has has a reputation for strong starts but not strong finishes you're temporarily replacing that justice league with a with a justice league that was kind of when the concept rolled out officially as JLQ was roasted across the board uh, for a various reasons. Some of them are, are, are valid reasons. Some of them are, uh, you know, unkind reasons. But these are, but a lot of these characters are untested or untried or just don't have the reputation to carry a Justice League title. And then, and then all you're telling me is that you're just going right back to the status quo, exactly what we talked about earlier. You're taking the toys out of the toy box, you're going to mess them up, get them all dirty, get them all smudged up, and then you're just going to put it right back in the toy box because that JLQ is not going to stick around forever. Nobody's going to think that it's, that's going to be a long-term play. And so the, so what is, the, what, is the, what is the emotional... Why do people read comics? Why do they stick with titles in comics? They stick with them because it's an emotional investment. People get emotionally invested in characters. They get emotionally invested in things that happen to the characters because they they emotionally uh, empathize and they sympathize with the, what the characters are going through, and they pull them going forward. And that's that's what builds memories. Emotions build memories. I want to get emotionally invested. That's what's going to stick with me as a storyline that I'm going to remember for years to come. There's nothing about this so far that gets me emotionally invested because I know it's just going to it, the deaths are not going to matter. The team that's going to replace them kind of doesn't matter and then they're just going back to the status quo after a few months it's a who cares moment which is because we've already done it before so there's nothing for me to get emotionally invested in so then why should i care i'll read it it could be good and josh williamson again strong start but i mean at the end of the day it's just like okay this is just another thing to go through it's like a big collective shrug josh Sorry. you you're a bit more optimistic yeah. right than the game a little doob of glue there. Uh, am I more optimistic? <laughs> no. Uh, no, I look, I, I kind of feel the same way about Josh Williams as a writer as Gabe does. And, you know, my, my stance is pretty much the same. He doesn't tend to stick his landings. Uh, I think he's been better. He's had more examples of good to solid stories more recently. So that gives me a little bit of hope, but he's also had some garbage. Like uh, he, he does, he's got that future state story. That was the, just like, it was absolute trash. Uh, it, he did justice league incarnate, which was meh. 
Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I always think back to to his events and uh, when he did, what was it, Justice League versus Suicide Squad, I thought it was terrible. And then he had uh, Justice League Odyssey, which I thought was terrible. And they had to, you know, boot him off the book early and get someone else in there to try to save it, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, so we'll see. Like, I, I want to see him do well. And I think he's one of the few writers that has, like, a, a semblance of writing superheroes that's left at DC Comics right now. That, that's doing something and trying. And hell, like, thank God he's actually trying because uh, it looks like a lot of people aren't. So I'll give him credit for that. I'm going to read it. I'm going to support it. And and it goes back to what you and I have talked about, Wes. You know, there have been so many books that we're like, we speak highly of it, and it can come across as like, you know, oh, my God, this is amazing. And it's really not that it's amazing. It's just that we finally got something that's okay to good, and it's so out of the norm to get that these days from the, from yeah, the big two. Say, yeah, I mean, it, 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 I, like I said, like Wes said, I did read it. It is good. It's not great. It's good. But it's, I'll say it's good in the fact that these characters do have their unique voices back. Again, like Black Adam is written like Black Adam in this. I'm like Bendis writing him like every other character where they all sound the same. The characters have their unique voices back. There's great action in this. And the person we thought who was going to survive wasn't that one. It's someone else. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a good read. Just check it out, I, I believe. Yeah, you'll, you'll enjoy it. What do you think, Kenneth? You gonna drop, dip your toe over in the DC waters and check out old Justice League seventy five and see the Justice League get killed off? It's been big news. Okay, this article says this was inspired by Death of Superman. So, in one word, no, it's the same. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same. They're killing the death of Batman, the death of Wonder Woman. We had Batman R.I.P. like years ago. It's like the same, same shit. I mean, now this is a lead up to Dark Crisis, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, this is the 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 catalyst. The, the art for Dark Crisis looks good, so I may check that out. But this, it's no, and it's like the JLQ Justice League derivative game. That's what we call it, Justice League derivative. That's what they are. That's what they're gonna. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 yeah, I saw the same comments that this was like inspired by Death of Superman. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls in chat, you are never going to reproduce that event. You're never gonna live up to it. You're never going to capture it. That no. is lightning in a bottle. That is never going to happen again. So if you want to draw some elements from it and bits and pieces, oh, by the way, another great black character that you don't see much. Where's Steel? Where's Steel? Where's John Henry Irons? He's actually he's actually in Action Comics this week. He shows up. I'll say that. Okay. He, he does okay. come up. <laughs> great. But where has he been for years? Where has he been like that... a, in a prominent way? Yeah. Um, now, that's, that's your black Iron Man without exactly. being black Iron Man. Right. You know, so he was that, a, a great original character that came out of that. The, right. Someone did a good little run for but, Steel. I can't remember who it is. But he's still derivative. No, well, he, yes no, he was no. able to stand on. Well, he was able to stand on his back. own in, in fifty-two. In the fifty-two series, after Infinite Crisis, he stood on his own. He took down Lex Luthor pretty much by himself. It was a great storyline that Mark Wade and all the others did with him. You can but do not, man, he, you can do mantle transfers, but there there have to be certain preconditions right. to making that work. Number one, the person currently holding the mantle has to go away. If the if the if the current Wolverine is still there, you can't just say this is the new Wolverine. You have a Wolverine. This is the Captain America. No, you, this is the Batman. You, you the old mantle has to go away, and that the the transfer has to be something that people will accept. It has to be, you know. Somebody, John Henry Irons is a perfect example. The world needs a Superman. Superman is dead. I've got to use what I have and I have to transform myself into the new Superman. He didn't just say, well, I'm just going to be a new Superman now just because. He's so, steel. Uh, but is right. that, he, he calls himself steel, not he, Superman. He didn't try to transform himself into a Kryptonian. He said, I got to use what I have. What do I have? What can I use? And how can I fill that gap? I may not be Clark Kent Superman with the little thing hanging down and the red cape, but I can I can use what I have to fill that gap because people need somebody, they need a symbol, they need something, and he made it work. That's that's a good, perfect example where a mantle transfer happens. And then when Superman came back, he's like, well, okay, I'm not Superman anymore, but you know what? People still need me. They still need that symbol. I'm gonna, still going to use what I have. And then he became Steel. That's a great example of where that works. That's a great example of developing a non-white character to fill a slot. And that's a great example of a character that should still be around and should be still be in, creating inspiring comic stories and not getting the time of day. He's more relatable than Iron Man. Than that. Yes, you get me worked up. You get me worked up again. 
Unfortunately, and it's a great example of Luis Simonson at DC Comics, which most people associate with Marvel. Yeah, I was going to say, unfortunately, they ruined what they had built by bringing in Natasha Irons and pushing her for well over a decade now instead of him. So, and the the Shaq movie, we got to acknowledge that one, Josh. Oh, look, that is that is a classic <laughs> film. I watch it every Christmas, and I cry tears of joy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is one of those, what are they thinking? I don't know. I, I'm i going to read it. We're obviously going to cover it here on the channel, but I'm not exactly excited with the death of the Justice League. Justice League. I don't think it's a very good plan to kill these characters off, but then have them still living in other books. It feels like it's unimportant. Supposedly, there's this idea, Drew, that eventually <clears throat> when these things meet up, like the, I guess the regular books will jump in ahead of time to meet up with it or something, but you won't experience any of the fallout. In the, in the universe, you know what I mean? Yeah, Except that's, that's true. And, yeah, and Gabe said it earlier. I mean, they let the cat out of the bag early on that everyone's everyone's coming back by before the end of the year, before December rolls around, November, everyone's coming back. It's like, what what the hell was the point of all this then? You guys yeah. just ruined everything. You just ruined your whole calendar year. I could not believe that. And it, like, there are next to no stakes because we know what's going to happen. We shall see. That is coming up this week. Definitely expect to see that one on Tuesday. And then there's another review I should be doing on Wednesday. It's a Marvel book. I can't. Oh, it's the new Amazing Spider-Man. So I'll definitely be reviewing that as well. So uh, this should be fun stuff. Do we have anything else to say about this? Or is it time to start recommending comic books? Mm. Uh, there we go. Let's, Let's recommend comic, comic books. books. We got through a whole show, and I, I didn't even get mad at a uh, game this time. <laughs> <laughs> we can we can go another two hours if you want. I know you can go yeah. two hours, man. We can do that on one topic. Captain yeah. America. We we can do this all. Oh, day, don't get me man. started on Captain America. Oh man, I did, I did not like that comic. <laughs> the art was great. That story. Oh, want to? Doc and I are going to review that along with Child the Amazons on Monday for our worst of the week segment. That'll be fun. Kenneth. We know you're a Spider-Man fan. You like the comic book superhero fights. What comic books are you recommending people read this week? The only new one I got, because you know I, I like the oldies, but goodies. So, but the new one I had, and you and Josh reviewed it, uh, Batman the Night number four. Now, like you guys said, there's nothing new explored here. This this whole thing is a codified recount of Batman's training. And if you want, and to everyone watching, a deep reference of this: read Batman Four Thirty One by Christopher Priest. This goes into the teacher that Batman goes to to learn his martial arts. Now, what what I love what Chip Zdarsky is doing is that he's filling out this story, not making it modern, but adding context and texture to it. And there is a new character that Bruce Wayne accompanies in his mission. You know, so. This I really like this. So, it's got a lot of Batman Begins, but it's also got a lot of those uh, origin stories from uh, Snake Eyes and yeah, and uh, Storm Shadow. It kind of feels like that, doesn't it? Yeah, and also if you watch the, the Arrow show, the first season, which was his best season, how Arrow had that list from his father, they put that in here too, right? Bruce Wayne gets a list from Henry Ducard of the people that he trains with. So that's a bit of that in this issue too. This is my favorite issue of this series so far. Yeah, yeah. If you like Batman and you really want to get into some of the Lord stuff, I, I think it's a good series. If you're expecting anything really new or groundbreaking, it might not be the comic book for you. I do want to say thank you very much to EVS for joining us here at the end. It was good to see him here. And we also, I think we're at 183 likes. If we can get up over to 200 before we get out of here, that'd be great. I think like we still the got smash like 200. Button. Like, like the smash button. We're at 275 right now. So that was Maybe. awesome. Maybe lick the smash button too. I don't know. Don't if that lick works as well. Don't, don't get don't sick or it. something. Don't, don't Doc, what are you recommending this week? I am recommending everybody buy a shit ton of fucking back issues because that's what I did. You bought like I, 60 I, of them. I, yeah, I, I took the girlfriend you, you to work went to the a other store. Night. Check this out, Kenneth. It was buy 50, get half off. Yeah. I got <laughs> I got I got to I got to 35 books and I was like, wait, if I hit at least if I buy like 15 more every I, I actually getting like 10 of these cheaper like for free so yeah I went and just you know kept... you're a comic book addict when the buy 50 get half off deal gets you that's, yeah, that's, yeah. That's so serious stuff like this. so I uh, you know I uh 
I, I went and bought a shit ton of picked up uh some of the I picked up the last couple of issues of the um uh Claremont LaRocca Fantastic Four that I was missing. Yeah. And the also the Heroes uh Return or Heroes Reborn uh Fantastic Four. The Jim Lee and uh Brett Booth era on Fantastic Four. I I knocked it I knocked out the balance of that that I needed. So, yeah, I so but go buy spend all your fucking money on back issues stop stop, stop buying this new garbage buy Let's, 80s comics that's a great yes thing. buy 80s comics i'm out yes. of 80s comics to buy so i'm now in 90s comics that i didn't buy oh very nice we've also got infamy or death i believe he's in he's in ireland with my fellow irish guys the only comic i got this week was a crowdfunded comic called dame gang i probably spelled that wrong it's about giant ladies <laughs> lol it, you did not spell that wrong. That is correct. What it is, it's uh, it's still in Indiegogo. I think it is it on demand. I think it might be on. Yeah, it's in demand right now. If you want to go check it out, the the ladies look pretty good. I'm not really sure who the creators are, but definitely uh, support people if you're into indie comic books. We also got Dark Admiral March here. He's essentially been here since day one. I think he might have been on our first live stream that had four people about three years ago. Great show, everyone. Thanks for being my good luck charm. I'm fishing. And they didn't start biting until the show started. Well, that's what I do. I draw the fish in. That's what, you know, Doc's got the smell and I bring the personality. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Hope you're getting lots of bites and uh, hope you're enjoying the, the fish. Haven't been fishing a long time. Gabe, you are the toughest critic at all of Cobble Books. People uh, have, have, uh, have cursed your name because you were too mean to them with your comic book reviews. What should people, what should people be reading this week? I, I'm tough, but I'm fair. So first shameless plug, uh, Weird Science DC Comics and Weird Science Marvel Comics. So if you want something DC, go to Weird Science DC Comics. If you want something Marvel, go to Weird Science Marvel Comics. Everything else, uh, Zenico Zenoscope, Dynamite, Titan, all, everybody else, and including indie submissions, we cover those. Go to Comical Opinions. We cover everything outside of DC and Marvel. So shameless plug, go there. So the two comics I'm recommending this week, first, World Finest number two. Uh, great. That's Batman Superman, written by Mark Wade. You know, you, you, you may or may not have opinions about Mr. Wade's personality, uh, but that was a darn good comic. Uh, He's and a piece actually, of shit. and I thought I thought number two was issue. <laughs> well, okay, fine. Uh, I I don't know him personally. I can't say a statement. I don't like what he does, but that's that's just me. But issue number two was actually I thought better than number one. It was more. It was tighter. It was more focused. Uh, it got the story done and you had a lot of fun stuff there. Uh, I liked the little interaction between Supergirl and Robin as they either had a prior date that went badly or something like that. And that was a fun conversation. You have a genuine threat. There are stakes. Everything is there for a good old fashioned solid classic comic. And I think Wes, you may have even done a video about, uh, about issue number two or have Absolutely. one coming up. So that was a great comic from DC. I got nothing from Marvel this week. The, you know, it's okay stuff, but nothing to really sing, uh, write home about. Uh, outside of Marvel and DC, I'm going to recommend Jennifer Blood, number seven. If you like crime thriller type comics with a little bit of black humor edge to it, kind of a hip, cool Euro crime thriller edge, uh, definitely check that out. I think Drew actually brought that one up and he was kind of a man on that one. But I love that type of stuff. Crime thrillers <laughs> where the lead is really basically she's a psycho <laughs> and she loves what she does being an assassin. And it's just kind of seeing characters take joy in what they're doing, even though it happens to be splattering guys brains all over the all over the pavement. That's that's just. I love that type of stuff. So if you're into crime thriller, especially with a kind of a, 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 a an Ocean's Eleven, maybe Quentin Tarantino kind of black humor edge to it, pick up Jennifer Blood number seven. Very nice. We've also got AL. Special shout out saying, I recommend Spy X Family. So yep. AL thinks you should go get the, the uh, Show to Jump app. Maybe go get the uh, manga itself and go read that one. Very good recommendation. Drew. You're at Comic Sleep. You have a YouTube channel. You guys got anything special coming up on that YouTube channel? Yeah, Tuesday we're going live. We're going to be doing our uh, top ten live. Um, we just said like this this Tuesday. There's so much big stuff coming out this week. We're like pull to Bill O'Reilly. F it, we're doing it live. Do so, it live. Um, yep, <laughs> should be a fun day. And uh, yeah, if you haven't gotten your Born to Blood copies yet, they are. We're finishing up the fulfillment this week. There aren't that many left to fulfill, but everyone should be getting them, including you, Josh. Hopefully, you should be getting here soon. 
<laughs> Very nice. You got any comics to recommend, Drew? Uh, we'll talk about that later. But, uh, uh, we are, we're going to record our best of the week. It'll be live on the channel tomorrow at about noon Eastern time. So we're at. Yeah. That'll be fine. Who else do we got? Uh, Josh, did you recommend any comic books? I have not yet. Uh, I would, uh, I'm going to echo what Gabe recommended with uh, World's Finest. <clears throat> I think it's a, a just a solid, good comic book, written well, great art. Dan Moore is excellent. Um, also, uh, Earth, Prime Earth, Earth Prime, Superman. Uh, after the Batwoman disaster, I had little hope, but I was holding out hope because the Superman shows them one good show. And this was actually a really good book. So I don't know if I enjoyed it as much as I did because I had no expectations, uh, but I enjoyed it. And then for sure, uh, Blue Beetle, uh, Booster Gold and Blue Beetle, like if you have Blue and Gold, if you haven't been picking that up, it's just a fun book. It's Dan Jurgens. Like it's it's a nice nod and throwback to, to the way comics used to be. Um, so uh, it's worth getting. I haven't, it was a weird week in comics. There, I didn't feel like there was much. Oh, uh, Ice Cream Man came out this week. It's it's wonderfully weird and odd and everything that it usually is. So if that's your cup of tea, pick it up. We may or may not be mentioning Ice Cream Man along with three other indie comic books when we talk about our best of the week tomorrow with Drew from Comics Lead right here on the channel. That'll be a lot of fun. After this, later we should have a an old school Green Lantern. I think it's in volume two comic book retrospective. So that'll be a lot of fun. And then um, what else we got? Oh, thank you to everybody for giving us the thumbs up. We went over 200 for the for the video. Really appreciate that. I'm glad you joined us for two and a half hours of comic book geeky goodness. And uh, we're going to say adieu, and we'll see you next week right here on the, the Thinking uh, Critical for Comics Aficionados. Okay.